Hey, what's up, bookworms, and welcome to Saturday Night Nights. I am joined at this round table by just like the best of the best of the best with honors. And I'm going to kind of give them a quick little uh, introduction here. Uh, the first lady of BookTube, we've got Sarah. Sarah, how are you doing this evening? I'm glad I didn't expect you to do me first, so I was just like, <laughs> drinking. So of course you did. I'm, I'm doing well. Speaking of first, we've got the first of his name, Philip Chase, my favorite night. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well, Mike. It is such an honor to be here for the very first episode of Saturday Night Knickets. Knickets, yeah. Right. So then we got the uh, first time on the channel here. We've got uh, you know the, the chivalrous, the pious library of Alexandria. Alan, how are you, my man? Look, that's right. The Romans for pious was the best thing that you could call a Roman. Like in the Aeneid, pious Aeneas, left and right. So that's a good. That's a this is what we just talked about before we went live, guys, is how everyone here makes me feel dumber. So this is just going to be a learning experience. I'm excited <laughs> about this. We got educators, we got doctors, and then we've got me. So, uh, hey, this should be a fun conversation. But, guys, this is just something I want to do is kind of like an extension of Talk About Nothing. Uh, where I aim on Talk About Nothing is kind of get some smaller uh, channels on there. And this one, I just said, you know what? I'm just going to get, like, the cream of the crop here. I'm going to get the big guns for this episode and see what happens. So... I don't know where this conversation is going to take us, but uh, it should be pretty, pretty fun. So, uh, guys, I guess the best, best place to start is um, what are you reading right now, huh? Ooh, Sarah, you want to go first? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm reading Mad, Mad Ship is the physical book that I'm reading right now, ah, exciting. which is exciting. I just started. I'm only at chapter two and I am listening to The Splinter King, which is by Mike Brooks. It's a book two in his. I don't remember what the series is called. I think it's called The God King Chronicles, maybe. But I read the first one last year. I'm listening to the second one right now. Now, Mad Ship, which book is that book two? Book two. Did mm -hmm. you like the first one? I loved it. It was so good. It's so many people I know on my Discord right now are reading, uh, you know, Live Ship Traders. They just can't stop talking about how great it is. And everybody's just like anxious for me. I'm like, I'm not reading it until next year, guys. Can you stop the hype train? So I'm excited because I, I, I like the first two books of Farseer, but that third book was kind of eh for me. And it kind of, you know, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I'm getting more and more excited the more I hear about it. Yeah, for me, the Live Ship Traders, after I read Farseer, I was like, yeah, Hobb is definitely like a top 15 author for me. After I read The Life of Traders, top five author mm. for me. Yeah. So what about you, Philip? What are you reading? Besides your own book, what are you reading right now? <laughs> I, Plug it. Plug it. <laughs> I am revising book three, actually. But uh, I am reading. I just finished a little while ago. Uh, something that will be familiar to you, Mike. Uh, book five of Dark Tower. Wolves of the Kala. Did you like it? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, there has not been a Dark Tower book so far that I haven't loved. And I still say, though, that Wizard, Wizard, and, Glass. Glass, Wizard and Glass is my favorite so far. Right. Wizard and uh, Glass is better than, than, than five, so I think, too. We, but, we, yeah, we, that we, ending oh. makes you be like, shoot, I got to start book six. Like, I know. Now, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, Mike, unless you're us, where we had to wait a year. Dude, I, it's like I had six. You had six year wait between four and five, and then exactly. four and five came. Out. I was like, well, at least I only got to wait a year. But then Song of Susanna came out. Well, I think we most of us that have read it know how that went. And See, <laughs> it's, only like, us, it's only us that had to wait for it that hate it. Yeah. People who read it like right after and then can go right into book seven don't. They hate have no it. problem. Yeah, yeah. The people who didn't have to wait, I get that a lot with the with the slog on Will of Time. People who didn't have to wait don't have as much of a problem. It's real, but they didn't have as much a problem with it. Same with Dark Tower. It seems like people who binge it are like I don't. I don't see the problems you have with them. Like, I'm like, well, you know, wait as long as I did, and maybe you did. What about you, Alan? What are you reading? Um, so currently, like, so I was, I didn't read anything in like April, and I feel like I came back to like a different booktube landscape where like every single person in the world is reading um, Dandelion Dynasty, and right? Yeah. It <laughs> and it's like, what, what happened? That's um, how I felt when Jade Imp or Jade City came oh out. Oh my! Like, Everyone was reading Mike. that except me. <laughs> oh my gosh, Mike. Um, I, so I'm currently reading um, a an arc of Daughter of Red Winter by Ed McDonald, who wrote the um, Ravens Ravens Mark series. Uh, Blackwing. I read Blackwing. I haven't read the other rest of the series, um, but I loved Blackwing, and so I'm reading that with Liana. That's and, the Ed McDonald series. Yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. I think you me about that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's pretty good. I'm only about twenty percent through it. This I don't understand people's hatred. Like. 
there are so many people who read live ship and like, oh, now I really like nautical settings. Like, what nautical books did y'all read prior that y'all hate nautical books? People Moby Dick. About, they, okay, first of all, 18th century whaling is amazing, first of all. Second, like, oh, there's so many people who are like, I didn't, I don't like nautical books. I'm like, what nautical books are you reading, first of all? Second, it, nautical yes, books with awesome. me. It's just Moby Dick and Old Man at the Sea. I'm just Old like, Man oh, I want nothing to do with the ocean ever again. Get out of here. Your Old bad Man. Hemingway opinion. <laughs> Hemingway is a genius, but that book, you know, is okay. Hemingway's a drunk. That's what he is. <laughs> you can be both. You can be both. You yeah. can. That's not. true. I mean, <laughs> hey, some of the King's best books were while he was drunk. Honestly, he doesn't even remember writing Cujo. None, none of the books are good. So, hot take there, Sarah. Well, first of all, hot hey, take. Hemingway has no good books. All right. Well, wow. Philip, are you going to do a GoFundMe? Oh, well, so, uh, you know, nothing is off the table, but first thing I'm going to try is I, I do have a literary agent who is going to be pitching my fantasy trilogy to publishers. Probably. I'm just waiting for one more author endorsement and then the pitch is going to happen. So I'm guessing it could be it, early as next week. Who is who the is author it? I'm waiting for? Who is, it? who is it? Who is it, Philip? I can't tell you. Oh, is it Joe? If, <laughs> if it's Joe, like give me like a Twitch or something. Is it Stephen Erickson? <laughs> Blink your eyes. Erickson. I, I cannot say exactly who, which author, but I will say that I am really happy with uh, the authors that have given me the blurb so far. They've been really very kind and um, excited to hear that kind of feedback from people whose books I really love. So it's just, it's surreal actually to have some of them read my books. Uh, it's just crazy. I'm kind of always kind of iffy about it. like I got invited to a con in Austin and I was just like, I honestly guys, we just, we just booked the family vacation. I don't have the money for lodging and gas and stuff to get to Austin right now. And uh, it was really cool. Cause I was going to get to meet Fonda Lee. You know, I was going to get to be on that mm -hmm. thing right while I started reading, uh, you know, green bone saga. And we were like, you should start to go fund me. And I was like, I just, I don't know. I just feel uncomfortable with doing Did that. You finish green bone. I haven't started. I start in the summer. So it would be right because it's in August. So it'll be right when I'm, you know, I started in July. So it'd be right when I'm in the middle of it. So I thought it would be a really good opportunity. But I was like, I don't know. I just feel weird about asking people for for money for me to go meet authors and, you know, other, other uh, you know, creators and stuff like that. I don't know. I just felt weird about it. It is a lot of fun to go to those things and to meet these people. And, and it can be strange and fun at the same time, I think. <laughs> So Soon and we go in to watch you speak, Philip. Be the Philip fan club going to watch you promote your book. I, I, get, to, I get to be like, oh yeah, I liked him before he was famous. Yeah, <laughs> I get to do that. That's what it's about, right? There. Alan gets to retain his hip, exactly hipster Philip. status. We'll be booing you, Philip. <laughs> hey, Alan, did you know you're Joanna's favorite Bert? Bert That's because in my last video, I can't say booktube, so I said Bertrand on accident. <laughs> It sounds like the old meme, the Ermagerd meme. Anybody yeah, remember the Ermagerd? Ermagerd goosebumps. Goosebumps, girl. Well, I'm reading this weird book, and I'm having a hard time figuring out why this series is so popular. Oh, because it's not it's not bad, but it's like there's nothing great about it to me, and I'm just having a hard time. And I don't, I'm not like slandering anything. I just don't get why it's so popular because it's like literally all it is is like. Imagine you're playing Final Fantasy and all the characters are obsessed with like gaining a level. That's like all these books are to me. And I'm just like, why is this so popular? I was like, well, you got to read manga. And I'm like, I've read manga and I don't think they're obsessed with like gaining XP in manga. I don't know. So Mike it, hates cradle fans confirmed. Yeah. Well, heard it here first. <laughs> no, the fans are pretty nice. I mean, they sent me the first nine books. So they're pretty that's nice. That's nice. But I, at this point, I'm just like, I'm not having a bad time, but I wouldn't say I'm having a good time with it. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't have know any of read them? I haven't read them. I know Andrew's read all of them. I have not read them. I mean, they're, they're, they're on them. my radar. Yeah. And that's the thing. Everybody tells me, oh, book three, it gets like amazing. I'm like, what? Well, did you have to like books one and two to think that though? Or, or, or am I going to read book three and be like, oh, okay, it finally clicked. Because right now I'm kind of like, eh. you know, I'm a character guy. And these the characters in this are just like robots. They're just like, I want to gain the next level. <laughs> you know, so... You mean they're not literally robots? No, no, they, they just they just their dialogue is like robots. <laughs> just to be clear. Yeah, well, I mean, with <laughs> some of the stuff we read, you never know. But you it's know, true. but you mentioned Dandelion Dynasty. Yeah, everybody on my Discord is doing a, a read along of Dandelion Dynasty because I guess the last book's coming out yeah. here pretty soon. 
but yeah, like you bringing that up is like how I felt two years ago when Jade City came out. Like every booktuber was talking about it. And I was like, I don't even have it yet. So yeah, it's weird how it's weird how it goes in waves like that. But it does seem like a lot of people are reading Dark Tower right now. So I'm glad I get to be a part of that. And obviously, I always encourage this. So and Wait, I think can I ask good. a question? What is, is Scott uh, mentioned in the chat there? Progression fantasy. And I've heard this series called Progression Fantasy. What does that mean? Progression fantasy. I think it's the XP thing he's talking mm -hmm. about, where characters literally level up and get more powerful, like okay. progression through an XP uh, a level chart type thing. Is that like an is that derogatory or is is that no? I think it's just a. I mean, if people who don't like it, it's derog it's derogatory. But like, I think okay. it's just a descriptor. Where it's a neutral term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I think it's just it's just telling you what kind of fantasy it is, like kind of D and D leveling up type thing. I okay. I think okay. if I'm incorrect, correct me in the chat. No, so I think you're right. It would it would be like if I called something Hemingway esque, and that was really positive. But to Alan, that would be derogatory because he has bad taste. I mean, <laughs> I mean, who's going to argue with you? Like, what? That's why read that are popular, Sarah? Like, <laughs> this is true. So this is a guy who says I don't like to read popular books or long books. So I mean, <laughs> like, it's not that I don't like to read popular books. It's that like there are other things that I want to read, and I'm just so tired of hearing about them. Like, I'm just so tired. Like, I just. Well, I mean, if I'm being fair, Alan, I don't think that Daniel Abraham's books are short. They, they are. They, oh, my gosh, are they? they are. Compared, first of all, the entire Long Price Quartet is like 1,250 pages total. Okay, yeah, I guess I do have that one volume. I guess I was thinking of Dagger in the Coin. Dagger and Coin. Um, now, Dagger and Coin is the longest one is 500, which is the upper level of what I consider a short fantasy book. If it's over 500, it's too long. Um, but most of them are like 430, which is well, you love Tchaikovsky, isn't it? most of his books like over 500? Um, yes, yes, and that bothers me, which is why I haven't read <laughs> this year, like because this is the year of the short book. So, yes, but his novellas aren't, but yes, Tchaikovsky's freaking books are longer than 500. Well, Alan, define short because I have a feeling you've already broken your rule uh, a couple times 500 or less, 500 or less is short. Yeah. No other genre would that be the case. I know, right? So five, 500 or less. But um, I don't think I've read anything over 500 in 2022. It's possible I'm lying. <laughs> well, lie. you are reading uh, The God is Not Willing, right? It's less than 500. Is it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, but it's Erickson, so it feels like 700. It's less than 500. <laughs> so Darren says Cradle is essentially anime in book form and that's what i hear a lot people use a lot of terms i have no idea what they're talking about so i assume it's like anime stuff like i, I can't think of the words I, I read right now but i, I don't know I, i've read berserk and i never felt like our character was just like obsessed with leveling up the whole time you know he had like character progression and stuff so i don't know i don't know i have read me. one book over 500 pages this year well one was dagger and coin but i listened to it on audio so it doesn't count the other one is oh, it counts. It counts. well then then two it's tagana and dagger and coin which is barely tagana is 676 pages but worth it worth breaking your rule for that's just it's just one it was so alan if i wanted to start with chikoski where should I, I have children of time should i start there or should i start with his his, his flint talk stuff instead okay well ever it, it depends if you like sci-fi then children of time as sarah will tell you everyone loves children of time I have not read any of his sci-fi except for uh, a couple novellas. I I like Guns of the Dawn, but I also is that like the ten book series. He has like a ten book series. That's right? Shadows of the Apt, which I've only read the first four of, which I think is exceptional. But I, I wouldn't ask anybody to start a ten book series. Right. Um, Guns of the Dawn, I really like, but I also like Downton Abbey. Um, there is the first like after the first chapter, like the first hundred and fifty pages are very Jane Austen, Downton Abbey, so very like. Like, oh, hello, the servants are gone. Um, and then it gets into like Flintlock, everyone's dying, the swamp, oh gosh, get us out of the swamp. Um, but I liked it. So if you like Flintlock fantasy, Guns of the Dawn is excellent. If you like I sci fi, I've read any Flintlock fantasy. I don't think I have. It's, uh, is that uh, Powder Mage? Is that considered Flintlock? Yes, Powder Mage. I haven't read it yet. Right. Anything, read it. That, anything where the max technology is like cannons, muskets, rifles, pistols. I wonder if, if, if First Law is eventually going to go Flintock. Philip, you think that'll happen? I think I, it feels like it's heading that direction, right? I mean, I didn't Abercrombie say something about not having guns? In yeah, I think the Philip, he did in his interview with Philip, he did, or I'm sorry, uh, Patrick, he did say. Oh, Patrick, he did. Yeah. yeah. he did. Same guy. Yeah, whatever. 
<laughs> I, take, I take anything that the I'll, P guys I'll say. Take you know, the hard a, I'll take that as a compliment. Absolutely. Yeah, I think he told him in there that he wasn't going to do guns, but it was like to me, like, yeah, but you also said that, you know, you were going to do this, this, and this, and you lied to us. So, or yeah. I'm sorry, you misdirected us. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Grim, Grimdark gets to do that. So, yeah. I, you know, th that would be the next logical step in first law after, you know, the, giving us in the age of madness this sort of, uh, industrialization kind of narrative, very Dickensian. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I actually have, that's what I'm reading now myself. What is Wright Hill's Chasm? Chasm? It's an awesome name. Who is it? What is that? Jenny, Jenny Wirtz. Uh, so it's oh. a standalone that she wrote. Uh, and this is sort of a warm up for me to get ready for her big series, The Wars of Light and Shadow. And that is something I'm going to be reading this year. Uh, that's an 11 book series. So, and they're long, Alan. So, I know. Look, look, I get left behind. I'm left behind on everything now. I literally live <laughs> on an island on BookTube now where everyone oh. has, like, they remember me in memoriam. Like, it, when they write their autobiographies, they're like, and there was one time this guy named Alan who uh, we did stuff with, but then he disappeared for a month. And so we all forgot about him, buried his body, and uh, left him <laughs> for the wolves. So, yeah, there's, there's no way I can catch up. The first book's 800 bloody pages, Philip. Yeah, it's long. It's a it's a chunker. But Alan, I'll visit you on your island. I, I appreciate it because like, look, look, Jimmy, me and Jimmy used to be friends and then y'all took him from me. So now me and Jimmy aren't friends because now like you and uh, AP took him from me and I, I, didn't get, I didn't get to go to the custody hearing because again, I was buried. So the lawyer gave y'all full custody. Custody? Wait, is, <laughs> is, Jimmy, is Jimmy a uh, a minor? I mean, look, in, in this scenario, Jimmy is our child from the <laughs> after I was killed. <laughs> this is getting weirder and weirder. <laughs> That's right. Well, That's if Alan right. breaks out the cowboy head, it'll just be perfect. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. It's, here, it's, people it's, pleaser. Here, it's here somewhere. I don't know where it is. <laughs> you must have a prop box. I so, refuse to believe anything else. So, Sarah, uh, so Philip is, uh, you know, five sevenths through dark tower right now i don't know what actual percentage that calculates to i'm not smart like you guys so are you like me and you're like anxious to see how he feels about book six i think that you and i were kind of like i don't think we were like on the same on book six but you understand that book six is very much the divisive one in the series yes. it makes people break one way or the other so are you as anxious as i am to see which way he breaks yes but i'm glad that he liked wolves of the call because it definitely starts to get weird there like Sorry. i mean it starts to get weird in wizard and glass to be fair yeah. but it gets weirder in wolves of the call and then weirdest <laughs> Song of yeah, even I didn't remember the Harry Potter references until I read this time. I'm like, he's talking about Harry Potter in a dark tower book. What's going on? I don't on like right Wolves now? of the Kala and I don't like Songs of Susanna. And but Wolves of the Kala is better than Song of Susanna. I and love Sarah, Wolves of the Kala, but yeah, Song of Susanna is almost like Philip's gonna like Song of Susanna, mostly because Philip likes basically everything he reads. So <laughs> I think if you had to if you had to bet, betting that Philip isn't going to like it is a that is a fool's bet. Like mm -hmm. you're, you're you're wasting your money. Now Philip, he's not going to say it's his favorite. He's not like he, there's. It can't be anyone's favorite. Like it can't. Not a not a real thing. Sure. It can't be. Yes, I'm positive. It can't be. No, there's nothing there except. Well, never mind. Um, when you have Wizard and Glass, it's not going to be Song of Susanna that tops it. If I mean, if things can top Wizard and Glass, but it's not going to be Song of Susanna. Here's the thing with Song of Susanna. I figure like I'll be like, oh, this is what I don't like, and then I'll watch Philip's video. I'll be like, you know, he makes some really good points here. Maybe it's not that. <laughs> Stand your ground, Mike. Don't let Philip. Don't let Philip's propaganda change you. Sal, yes, I do work in finance and numbers, but it is a holiday weekend, and it doesn't work up here on holiday weekends. So that's how that works. So I am, I am not math. I am not mathing. I am not mathing right now. So. That's what people tuned in for, though. That's why they're. I, here. I know. I know. That's why. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, Rockio. Rockio is in here. Uh, so who here has read Sun Eater? Now I can put you on the spot because Rockio is in the chat. Albert, Albert, so I'm spinning my patron wheel June 1, and my patrons, like like 20% of the wheel is Sun Eater nice. because they're so desperate because Sun Eater sounds awesome. Like everything I've heard about it, I am it is over 500 pages to like it, but it's so long. Like the first book is so long. So I'm not going to reach for it right now because, again, trying to wrap up the shorter books, but if the patron wheel spins it, I have no choice, and I must read it. So this is their best, their best bet to get me to read it during the year of the short book. So I'm going to spend it June one, and again, 20% of that freaking wheel is going to be Sun Eater. It's missed the last three times, but 
more and more people are piling on the Empire of Silence uh, thing to get me to read it. It sounds. I mean, so I recommend awesome. it, but yeah, yeah, for sure. Same with you, Philip. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm. It's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. Yeah. Um, Same. When I can fit it in my plans, but uh, I'm going to read it for sure. I'm excited based on what I hear about it. Uh, I may have to break my all fantasy rule for the channel and then just cover it. What the heck? You know, hey, I even, I even, for Dune. even Christopher calls it sci fantasy. Yeah. You covered Dune. Yeah. I covered Dune. So I, I, that's kind of sci fantasy too. So I feel like I can, I can, I can swing it. I'll do it. Is there yeah. a character named Vespasian in it? Cause if there's a Vespasian, then I want to pick it up even more because Vespasian is the best. Doesn't ring a bell, but oh man. Good just name Hadrian. for a cat. Just I Hadrian. Think. Vespasian yeah. is amazing. Yeah. The patient fell asleep during one of Nero's performances and wasn't murdered for the uh, for the offense. He had balls, 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 balls of steel. See, this is when I feel like I'm like an old fuddy-duddy of book two because Alan's got all this fun stuff. He's got the wheel. He's got the cowboy hat, all this stuff. And I just got <laughs> I just got, yeah, hey, here, I like this book or I didn't like this book. You know, that's when I feel like the grandpa. That's just, that's just what I do in my classroom. I have prompts in class, too. Nice. Not to mention your multiple personalities, although I haven't seen Posh Allen in a while. It's been June was the last time they appeared on my channel. That's mm. how I'm, I'm such a horrible booktuber. I need to be better <laughs> life. Like, I'm just bad at everything. I just need to get better. Like, get good. That's awesome. I'm glad that you agree that Vespasian is the best. Look, trust me, there's plenty of things where I'm like, I don't think my channel is entertaining at all. So I, I get that when I say this. 60,000, 66,000 people disagree. I'm about to be 70, but you know, okay. I'm still just 70, like, you know what? people disagree with you. I don't know. I need to get, I need to get Elon Musk to audit it and tell me that like 30,000 are bots probably. So, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but you know what? Bots make the numbers look really, really good. Because, you know, I'll put out a video. I got an audience of 70,000 people and I get and I struggle to get 2000 views on the video. So I'm like, all right, so maybe, it happens. maybe these aren't all real viewers, you know? Yeah. Well, I do think that YouTube is better about sweeping away the bots every mm -hmm. now and again. You know, when you lose like 20 subscribers, suddenly it's probably they got rid of some bots, right? Mm -hmm. That happens every every around New Year. They start to start to. Yeah. To kind right. of call those viewers. Yeah, I have a question, Mike. How mm -hmm. likely do you think it is that the July announcement from Pierce Brown is a release date for? It's got to be. I mean, okay. I don't see how else it would be because he he knows everybody's waiting for that. I just he's such a no nonsense guy. I don't think he would do that just to kind of like play with people, uh, you know. And the fact that he took two hundred manuscript pages. I mean, we got a professional author on here with, on the call with us, so you know he can he can tell you how the, how much this means. He took two hundred manuscript pages and threw them in the trash because he was unsatisfied with the ending. I think as an author, that's got to just be excruciating to do. But I've been like, hey, take your time and do it right. You know, mm -hmm. if you're satisfied with it, it's more likely I'm going to be satisfied with it. So I, I admire his uh, patience with it. But uh, yeah, he knows he's been waiting for this, and it is. You know, he wrote all the other ones within like a year of each other. So he knows who've been waiting for it. I don't think that he would set this up just to be like, oh, it's just me joking about like some new Folio Society edition or something. He just doesn't seem like that type. So my guess is he says, yes, here's the book title when it comes out next June. That's that's my guess. Because he usually that's puts them out exciting. in the summer. Are you current, Sarah, on Red Rising? Yeah. Oh, I am so also current. I am also current. Yeah, my wife is. Uh, she she loved the trilogy, but she said she wasn't going to start the sequel trilogy until there was a, at least a release date for book six. And you know, she's got that George R. R. Martin PTSD. You know, uh, when we first met, she had never read Song of Ice and Fire, and I was like, "You got to read this series." Because at the time when we met, it was still like, "Yeah, he's going to finish it." It's just he's just struggling a little bit with this one book. Oh no! And yeah, so now she's like, anytime I recommend a series to her, she says, "Is it finished?" <laughs> you know, so she won't read it. So that's my fault. Yeah, I, in sure. high school, I was reading, um, you know, I read Storm, Storm of Swords, up to Storm of Swords, and then up to uh, Wasteland, and then Wizard and Glass came out while I was in high school, and then we read that, and then we waited, you know, I was in college when friggin'. I try to explain out. this to people in the read-along right now, is like, you guys don't understand, uh, Wolves of the Cala was basically my Dance with Dragons, and I, yeah. it's never going to happen. He's never going to finish it. And yeah. then he had that accident where I thought he had died, and I was like, "Oh my god, we're never going to get the other Dark Tower." You know, so I was yeah. I was more okay with ending on Wizard and Glass than I 
was on with the actual ending. <laughs> no, no. Then, uh, then ending like where where it ended with um, "Song of Ice and Fire." Um, oh, yeah. Like I love Wizard and Glass, and I just wish the rest of Dark Tower hadn't happened, and we would just had a bunch of adventures in freaking uh, Gilead. Yeah, yeah, and like I just want to like Cuthbert. It, why is Cuthbert not in it more? Like mm -hmm. and and Elaine. Like, <laughs> It's not it's stopped with the Cuthbert stuff. Well, I don't need to be that guy, but have you read the uh, the graphic novels? Is him and Robert first got together and they did all the stuff like right where uh, Wizard and Glass ends. He talks about everything all the way up to the Battle of oh, Jasco cool. Hill, which he references in Wolves of Kala, and it's really cool. But it's still like, I wish I could have got this in book form. Yeah, I know. I feel like Eddie Dean though is a pretty good Cuthbert. Oh, he's my, he's my favorite. Right? Yeah, Eddie or uh, or Larry from the Stand has got to be my favorite Stephen King characters ever. I love hmm. Eddie. Yeah, he's the best. So, books of bad bells. Anybody read this here? Books yeah, of bad bells. Alan might have. I have. <laughs> That's the Send One of Sends books. Yeah. Um, those. Uh, I mean, I like them. They're weird. Um, did you like the last one? Because that's the one that I've been, been like, ah. I mean, yes, I like the last one. Everybody, okay. everybody who didn't like the last one has a bee in their bonnet. Um, Ooh. like, this is I what I got of here, guys, for these takes. I love it. I understand. Words. Look, I you cannot like it, but this is like me and Kyle are mortal enemies because of this. It's <laughs> and Patrick and Patrick. Yeah, I thought Patrick review was like, book. It's Poor not Patrick. a one star book. It's not. It's just, it's just not. Did he like, one star it? You can't give the book three five stars and then give book four one star. You can't. The, it's not poorly written. You just don't like what happened in it. It's not a one star book. And so, I like, seriously, like, I've declared war on them and their families. So, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Patrick's review says something like, I wish I could go back in time and not even start this series because I think of that's all a vein pop out of so, Alan's forehead there. So, no, my problem, my problem, and Patrick and I have talked about this. I love Patrick, even though he's my, my arch enemy, is people then look at Patrick. Patrick's voice carries too much weight. So then there's a bunch of people saying, Oh, well, I'm not going to start that series now because Patrick didn't like the ending. And I'm like, Even if you don't like the ending, books one, two, and three are so worth it. It's still worth reading it. Even if you don't like the end of Dark Tower, that doesn't make the rest of the books bad. Like it doesn't make it not like not worth having read. And again, just because Patrick doesn't like it doesn't mean you're not gonna you're not gonna like it. I like it. Why does no one listen to that? Why is the fact that I like it meaningless? Oh, because Alan doesn't like anything that's good. Oh I'm sorry, popular. Hey, Alan, I'm going to read the Books of Babel this summer. <clears throat> Good. And you know what? You're not going to hate book four because you don't hate anything. So <laughs> I need you to read it. Patrick. That's know, actually, Patrick, likes most, Patrick likes most things, to be fair. Yes, I. which is why it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's why you should trust it. I haven't no. even read it. <laughs> I get that Patrick though, and, Alan. It's, it's like, I didn't, I didn't care for Name of the Wind, but I told everybody, don't let that be the reason you decide to read it or not. You read it and you make up your own mind. So I, I get that with like uh, someone's voice carrying too much weight because I, I still get emails and stuff. People mad that I apparently chase people off for reading Brent Weeks because I flip tables over, you know, the Lightbringer series. And I'm not gonna lie, thought it was garbage. You know, the way that what he took one of the most amazing beginnings to a series and completely shit the bed. I'm not gonna lie about that, but I've never once said, and you shouldn't read it. You know, I always tell but people. You know, speaking you know, of that, that is a book that I read and didn't really like. It was the yeah. uh, black black prism? I well, read shit! If you didn't like book one, yeah. oh yeah, <laughs> man, you have no idea. Whoa! So, Mister Mister Philip likes everything. Uh, debunked. No, there are some, no no no. Oh. There are some things that he doesn't like. He just doesn't talk about them. Yeah. So I'm I'm the same way. I won't review a book if I yeah. didn't like it. I. I yeah. I'm not going to mention there were some books I read last year that I really didn't care for. And I was like, I'm not going to review it. Cause I just, I feel terrible about that. I had to review uh, the hunger by Omakatsu because it was part of my uh, fright fest. And it just broke my heart because I did not like that book. And I had to give it a negative review. Cause I just don't like to do that. I don't like to detract anyone from picking up a book, you know? So yeah, I get that. Well, Philip doesn't like stuff. Like it just, like if you watch Philip's channel, you would get the impression that he doesn't. It's just that when he reads something he doesn't like, he doesn't come out and, 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 and that's, that's Philip's brand. And there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah. that, that lets me say, I mean, Philip is also a nice guy who understands like, this is what I liked about it. You know, even if he doesn't like it.
Yeah, I, I've had a few reviews that were mixed, mm -hmm. and um, you know, you just you, you can say certain things were done well, and then certain things not so much. Like uh, I can give an example. Uh, probably get me in some trouble. Rage but of Dragons. Rage of Dragons is a good example. Uh, oh, you didn't like it? I I liked it, but I didn't love it. And uh, I do I, think it's overrated by BookTube quite a bit. Maybe, but it, for me, and this is me as a reader too. It was just too much action, 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 and not enough quiet moments to develop the characters. Uh, that's my basic criticism of it. But the action was really well done. It was great, you know. Uh, other one that was fairly popular that I, I criticized somewhat was the Poppy War trilogy. I, I I got through it, unlike you, Mike. I read the whole trilogy. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I think you made the right choice based on your responses to the earlier stuff. You would not have liked the third book. You really would not have, I think. Uh, but yeah, I mean, my, I had I had problems with the sort of narrative clunkiness of that trilogy. Uh, I liked Rin actually as a not not liked her, but I thought she was a compelling character. Um, so, you know, I, I will say what I, if I think something could be better, I will, I will remark on that. Um, but, uh, I think there's usually something good to say too, about just about any book. Sure. Right. Sure. I agree. Like people think that I, that I go on freaking like my channel and like tear stuff up. I don't, I don't do that. Just like my students think that I yell at them because I act like this. I have never once yelled at a student who's gotten a question wrong ever. Instead, I'm like, no, that's not right. Um, like, I see what you did there, but see why the ending is this. I always do that. But because I'm like this when they're fools, they think that that extends to everything. Just because I rant doesn't mean like I go on BookTube and talk about how much I hate crap. I don't. I just have really strong opinions. And people are always like riling me up. Like, the chat saying crap to rile me up right now. <laughs> tries to get me worked up. It's because it's so hard. They want to see if they can do it. I just freaking tagged myself. Sorry, Christopher Rocchio. I tried to tag you and I just tagged myself. Hey, Alan, look at this thing I just wrote. <laughs> yeah, this was like, uh, I talk about when I talk to Philip, it feels like uh, I'm always learning something. Uh, this is the reason why when I had Christopher Rocchio on the channel, we started talking about Voltaire because he's, he just, he's, he's ever the historian. He's always going to kind of take it to a place where I'm just like, I feel like I'm a little out of my league in this conversation right now. <laughs> but God bless him. He's the best. He's responding there to the fact that like Vespasian's son, Titus, I really like. I think he's awesome. He only ruled two years before he died, but I like it. But my students hate Titus because they don't like that he virtue signals because Titus once said a day without, like I wasted a day because he, he didn't do a good deed for someone one day. And he says, oh, that's a day wasted. And they hate that. They say, oh, that's nice guy receipts. And so they hate Titus, like for no reason other than they think he's virtue signaling. I'm like, that's so stupid, guys. What is y'all's problem? And so he's saying they don't have a problem with him raising Jerusalem and massacring the Jews. Like, I'm like, no, they don't have a problem with Roman conquest. Really just just people acting acting like a nice guy. They like the weird ones who they like the emperors who, you know, make their horse consul. So <laughs> not where I thought the conversation was going to go tonight, but I'm here for it. <laughs> here for it. Caligula tied people upside down and gnawed on their testicles. So how's that for demonetizing this conversation? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you apparently, if you don't say that in the first like two minutes, you're oh, okay, good. <laughs> so uh, Dan brings up the upside down. Anybody besides me still watching stranger things? No, I don't watch no. anything. So well, I know you don't. You, you probably still have Betamax at your house, but you know we <laughs> we, 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 we have streaming here. Watch the first two episodes. I'm actually pretty impressed with it. But uh, you know, I didn't hate where Stranger Things has went, like everyone else has. So I, I'm fine with it. It's I got a lot of 1986isms in it, and I'm here for that stuff. I'm the target demo for you know 1986isms. But you know these young whippersnappers, Philip, they don't know. They don't know. <laughs> it's like, true. It's true. What's the world coming to, right? I'm still trying to get over the gnawing on testicles thing. <laughs> no, sorry. Sorry. It's, it's just a hard me. conversation to stray away from. That's for sure. <laughs> but, you know, I did watch, uh, what, Jackass 4.5 last night as oh, well, and there was a lot of gnawing on testicles and that. And That takes me back to uh, the degenerate that I used to be and realize that I still am because I still find a lot of fun out of watching Gross. these guys just beat the shit out of each other. It's, it never gets old for me. I don't know. 
like the emperors were, the Roman emperors were. That's what that's what absolute power does to you when you have the ability to just do whatever. And, and some inbreeding, I suspect. I mean, look, Caligula had a pedigree. Like his dad, Germanicus. Like, like he's the son of Germanicus, and the people loved him because they just had freaking grouch, paranoid, weird old man Tiberius, who was the last picked for dodgeball, and so they're happy. But then, dude, lost his bloody mind. So, I mean, yeah. There's a little bit of that, especially later, but there's not a ton of inbreeding with Caligula. Um, I mean, Claudius marries his niece, which is gross, but I don't know. I don't know. His, his Caligula's dad should have been emperor. Boom, done. This could glory. easily transition into a song of ice and fire discussion right now. It really could. Oh, yeah. really I, wouldn't, I, be that, I wouldn't be that much of a stretch, honestly. Yeah, Evie, I'm the same way. Me and my wife were just commenting about, like, I think they listened to the criticism that a lot of people were saying that, like, Stranger Things kind of got away from the horror because I feel like this this season's, like, straight up, like, something from Hellraiser or something. It's 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 dark. We're only, like, two episodes in, but it's it's messed up stuff. And you know what? I love me some gothic horror, so I'm, I'm all about it. I think, I think, Sarah, I can't believe you're not watching Stranger Things because the series is basically a love letter to Stephen King. It really is. And the Duffer Brothers are huge Stephen King fans. So, so I, I did watch the first season. I don't watch a lot of TV. Um, so I have to be very selective when I do watch something. And I have watched even less TV of late. Same then. here, but they put out one season like every three years. So I feel like I can, I can schedule the time for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is true. I'm watching... Um, an anime right now that is also kind of weird and is it progression uh, fantasy anime it is, not. it is not it is not oh is it sports anime no it's not what is it is Although it banana, I watch, banana fish I no i've already watched that several times Kelly, <laughs> um, you and i both i it's feel... called um, oh sorry mike no no that's my fault i cut you off go ahead no i was just saying it's called shin sakai is that how i said it S sakai is that how i say that alan you speak japanese uh, how's it spelled s E K I A I. Sakai. Mm -hmm. Sakai Yori. It's really good. It's kind of horror slash dystopian. It's very strange so far. I'm like ten episodes in. I'm still not really sure what's happening, but I like it. Are we gonna talk? Are we talking about 20th Century Boys at some point, or did y'all do that? Like the I second the whole it. series, I haven't started it. It's it's so good, Sarah. Like, did you finish up to ch chapter 15 or whatever, volume 15? Uh, I'm not sure if I. No, I'm almost there. Oh. Okay. Everyone told me as a King fan that I would like that. Would you agree with that, sir? I think movie? you will. I think it's you excellent. will. It's excellent. Probably the author is like a huge Stephen King fan. So yeah. it is it is excellent. That and Monster. Monster's also excellent. Yeah, have that one I watched the anime for that. So Kelly, I feel the same way. I always say when I talk to Philip, I feel like I'm learning something, but I also feel dumber. <laughs> You're not alone there. You're not alone there. I mean Thing is, watch I also... our Beowulf review and I'm just like, Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> me too, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was such a fun conversation. I yeah, love that one. Yeah. Can't go wrong with Tolkien and Beowulf, right? Oh, I'm one. with you, Jonathan. People ask me all the time. Number one question I get, how do you read so much? I'm like, well, simple. I don't doom scroll Twitter and I don't you know, watch a ton of TV. I'll binge something with my wife once in a while or I'll watch movies with my kids. But yeah, five out of seven nights a week, I just sit in the recliner and read a book. So, I mean, that's. You'd be surprised how much time you have if you don't watch a ton of TV, you know? So Yep. Philip yeah. doesn't have a TV. <laughs> well, I have a television, but it, I don't have anything like cable. Oh, that's right. Your daughter plays games on it. Do you still have a fax machine, Philip? Uh, no. <laughs> you use like smoke signals? Or <laughs> <laughs> My mom still has a VCR, and it's hooked up. I do still have a VCR. Philip, on, uh, on the Charity Jeopardy, someone literally in the comments said, is Philip doing a bit? Like, is he doing a bit? Like, with not knowing that, not knowing how to like put two tabs side by side. And I had to be like, no, like that's not a bit. <laughs> it was so funny. It was, that was, that was real authentic me. It was amazing. Uh, to be fair, though, Sarah kind of set me up there. She didn't tell me I was going to have to do all that. So I, I, bl <laughs> I blame Sarah. <laughs> blame, blame me for everything that happened that day. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a fun day. I had so much fun being an idiot. I think it uh, broke me because I literally left BookTube and and like that's when y'all buried me. Like like it was the, I, it was a jeopardy that killed you. It huh? must have been like I was just so completely like just destroyed that I just went out in the desert and like passed wow. out and y'all thought I was dead and so you covered me with a thin layer of 
I had to uh, sadly message Jimmy and be like, does Alan hate me now? Like, I haven't heard from him in a month. Like, is, is this what has happened? Did, I, put did, out, I put out a video making fun of Alan just a, in a very nice way after the charity Jeopardy. And I never heard that. Oh, no. Does, does Alan hate me now? Because <laughs> I made fun of him losing at Jeopardy. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, I hate both of y'all now. <laughs> hey, Alan, how do you feel about Krupp? Oh my gosh, they got to stop that. I, I don't like Krupp, Matthias. Me and you seem to be the, uh, an island on that one. I'm on your island for that one because I don't Look, get Krupp, it. Krupp, Krupp grew on me a little bit in, in Toll the Hounds. Um, no, that's I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't like Krupp. Like, I don't like Krupp. I've, I've told Steven Erickson I don't like Krupp, like to his face. <laughs> no, a lot of people told me they said they, they felt like you believed that because of the audiobook. And I was like, well, I'm not listening to the audiobook and I can't. I've never listened to the audiobook. Years. Never even heard it. I just don't like whenever Krupp, whenever Krupp makes the books 50 pages longer. <laughs> yeah, that's what they need to be 50 pages longer, let me tell you. Yeah, he's got a lot of dialogue, you know, so. You know. It doesn't have to be a lot of dialogue, though, Philip. He could <laughs> say what he needs to say in one or two sentences. It's verbal mastery. Oh, my gosh, no. It's, 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 no, it's verbal diarrhea. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, yeah. It's true. I hate it all of you. Oh, you do? I, I, get no, 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 Alan. I get emails asking if, like, me and Alan have beef. And I'm like, not as far as I know. But, you know I think both of us have, like, you know, real lives shit to worry about. I'm mean, worrying about booktube drama. I mean, like, I am a nice person. I know that my tone does not. I have Asperger's. Uh, I know that my tone does not convey that. But I am a nice person who does not hate anybody. Certainly not, like, Philip or Sarah. Um, I hate Kyle and Patrick sometimes. Um, <laughs> when they talk about books but of they blaspheme like oh my gosh the freaking heresy book of Babel doesn't like it's not it's not a one star book I understand what happened you didn't like like okay I can understand how people don't like it but like it's still beautifully written if you like the way the book three was written you can't all of a sudden not like the way book four is written the written the same so I'm getting more coffee you need some uh cue cards to throw oh, this can't be true philip you didn't you don't know what a podcast is Maybe no well i mean i know what it is but i was just i was filming my video and i was trying to remember uh, the term the word podcast and it just wouldn't come in my brain so i try to tell people we you know we guys we record this live and a lot of us don't do any cuts in our videos and sometimes the word just won't they just won't pop in there. You know? I just left it in for a little authenticity. So Sometimes I could have, I could have edited that out. But yeah, it was when I was talking about uh, we're doing a uh, a read along of Jenny Wirtz's uh, the standalone book that we talked about earlier. So to ride hell's chasm, and uh, Joanna is going to be joining me on that, and uh, Blaze from Under the Radar Books, and he has a podcast, uh, which. I just could not remember the word podcast at the moment. And then just sort of, it sort of stuttered into my brain eventually. So yeah, I did get we'll it. Leave Andrew's comment until Alan gets back. Oh, that one's for you. That's Alan. fine. Like a three stars is a perfectly acceptable rating for that. Do you book. know how bad something's got to be for me to give it one star? That's why I stopped rating books on Goodreads. Yeah. You know bad. I mean, look, I hated book four of Lightbringer and I gave it two stars. I mean, something has to be like beyond unreadable for me to give it a one star. Really. <laughs> I think I it was one star maybe. But I'm the same with five star. I don't give five star unless I think it's something that people will be reading like a hundred years from now and people couldn't stand that. So I just stopped reading. I just stopped see, rating books on Goodreads. It, this is where, see, this is also where, this is where my, my feud with Philip comes in because all Philip has to do is be like, Hey, so I'm reading this book and everyone's like, Oh my gosh, Philip Chase. Can I read that book with you? I want to buddy read that book with you, Philip Chase. Meanwhile, I'm over here like, guys, like, what if we read these awesome books and people are like, I don't have time. to do <laughs> Same. Like, hey, I, I get hey, all these people who tell me, Oh, you inspire me to buy all these books. But I was like on the discord, I'm like, Hey, anybody want to read this? No. But like no. everyone else's service, Hey, Hey, we're going to read, you know, the, this book this month. Everybody's like, Oh, I want to join. I'm like, I've been hey, Alan, begging you to read like three years for uh, a year. And they would read the ride Hell's Chasm with me, Alan. I mean, I mean, yes, <laughs> I don't have, I don't have room for it, but yes, I do. But Jimmy, Jimmy's like, I don't do read alongs. Like, Keeping up with like a three book read along, like that's too much. Meanwhile, also Jimmy, I'm gonna read eleven books along with Philip. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and AP. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. I know. 
Philip, like the freaking Pied Piper, and like my, I have the the I know, and I have the kiss of death. Oh, Alan likes it. No oh, one's gonna read death. that until six months later. And Alan, no, Alan, no, Alan, you were I right. read I read the Long Price Quartet because of you. How long? How long after? Well, I, I mean, it was because of you. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, once I'm dead, people will appreciate my brilliance, <laughs> but not in this. <laughs> I even gave you, I think a, a, you're the very appropriate title of the long price prophet, right? Hold on. Hey, people didn't appreciate Robert E. Howard until after he was dead. It's a good thing. There it is. There it <laughs> is. On my desk, Philip. Matthias, I do plan to read Book of the New Sun. I just, I want to finish Malazan first because I've heard it's a very heavy read as well. So I want to make sure that I finish Malazan first. When is that going to happen? That's a great question. It's a great, great question. But it will happen. Andrew, you can read. You can do it. You can read along with everyone because you read too fast. You read 20 books. No, no. A Andrew DNFs too fast. I read 10 pages of this book and I DNFed. I'm like, 10 pages, huh? Wow. So a lot off 10 pages, I guess. Look, one day people will acknowledge that I was a sage. And they'll be like, you know what? If only we had listened to that wise and sage, angry man. I think prophets are necessarily angry, Alan. It's just I'm not. I'm not, I'm not angry either. And I know. I know my conduct here has not proven that out. But <laughs> <laughs> like, no. I just. I've been too involved. I've been too involved with school. Like, I have. Like, all I talk about are my freaking kids. Like, people are so sick of listening to me talk about my freaking students at this point. But um, you know, I came back and everybody's gone. And now I'm sad. <laughs> oh, Philip. Got the, you got the, you got the square jaw and the smile and the, and the nice like salt and pepper thing. Yeah, sometimes I'll be like, I'd read with You're, him. Yeah, you can grow it. one too, Alan. No, I can't. I physically can't. You can't oh. grow a beard? No, it, I just look homeless. <laughs> <laughs> it, it I have like video magic. evidence of what happens when I try to grow a long beard while I was not working and I was at school. And it was just like, it gets like right here and it just stops. And I'm like, all right, I guess it's just not going to happen. Because after I, not John Gwynn, I was like, I want a Viking beard like John Gwynn. It didn't. can't be done. Yeah. Can't be done. I can't do it. Like I just seriously, it's like, oh, look at that man who came out from under the bridge. Oh, let's give him some food. Seriously, have, have people actually tried to that to give you my food? Students, I, my students make fun of me. They're like, "What's wrong with you, Mister Walker? Like, are you okay?" And I'm like, "I just haven't shaved. Like, I, I'm sorry. It looks like I'm experiencing some massive trauma." <laughs> I got some Hayden. I got some book two drama. Uh, this one time, Sarah just like completely ignored a message from me Ooh. and I was just totally angry about it. It's not true, but I'm creating drama because that's, that's, that's what some people are like. I'm serious. I get messages a lot of times. Like, do you, do you like hate this booktuber or that? And I'm like, I can't think of a single booktuber. I, I have anything but positive feelings about. So I don't know. Maybe I just haven't run into the, like the really bad ones. I have no idea. So uh, like I said, when you get like, uh, you know, my age, you just, you don't have time for stuff like that. So I don't know. I don't really know any drama going on on book two, but I do get weird emails sometimes. Yeah. I feel like we, we disagree sometimes about books and sometimes about book issues, but I've never had a problem with a person like on a personal level or anything like that. Yeah. Speak so. for yourself. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I don't know, Sarah, you got me to read dark elf. It was your review of dark elf that made me decide. Well, that, that and a lot of other people like really selling it to me. That made, basically, I'm I'm an easy sell. You tell me there's an animal companion and there's an in awesome that. That I'm like, yeah, okay, sure, I'll do that. But it was your review which pushed me over the top. So I, I, I guess I need to thank your husband because your husband loved that series, right? Yes, it was like a very spur of the moment review. I recorded it for his birthday because it's his uh, his favorite book, and he watches all my videos and usually doesn't know anything that I'm talking about because one time. I recommended him a book that he didn't like, and now he doesn't trust my judgment for the rest what, what of What book was it? It's called Orcs and Crakes by Margaret Atwood. It's a, she's a Canadian author. Is that and the he one who wrote The uh, Handmaid's Tale? Yeah. yeah. And he, we had to read The Handmaid's Tale. Uh, we uh, went to university together. That's where we met. And we did a, sat a satire course where we read Voltaire, or where we read Candide, which Chris Ferracchio would have hated. But uh, we had to read The Handmaid's Tale and he absolutely hated it. And I was like, well, you should read Orcs and Crake because it's great. You will love it. And he did not. <laughs> he absolutely hated yeah, that. That's why I make these jokes about how you DNF everything. 
I am. Um, like, I think Dark Elf trilogy is better than Icewind Dale. Um, I don't. I don't know. That's all I've read I, so I, far, I love, but I thought Homeland was awesome. I love the Menzo Branzan uh, stuff, and that's why the trilogy after Icewind Dale. I like better. I don't like the stuff with the crystal shard. Like, I just like, let's move on and go back. Drist well, isn't even like the main character in that. Cause it was like unexpected, the popularity for him. Right. So he isn't even the main yeah, character. I mean, in that he, is, he is the main character, but there's a lot more like Bruner and I don't care about Bruner or your students. Mithril Hall is okay. But Wolfgar is one of the worst characters in any D and D book ever. And yeah, like I got, the, I got the mention of these characters in Dark Elf, which I could tell was just him tying it into that. So I don't really have any context to him. Yet, Regis, but I've heard of him. Regis is awesome. And Artemis and Trary is awesome until he's not awesome because Salvatore's like, you know what? I have to use this character in every book. So what if I make him not awesome anymore? And <laughs> then I'm like, whatever, man. I'm like, whatever, bro. Whatever. I felt like a full on nerd when I was like, oh, a mind flayer. I know what that is. Yes. I say DD. Illithids, <laughs> mind flayers are my favorite monsters to use. Philip, get ready. Okay. Yeah. Mind we're doing, are we doing book two DD? I mean, okay. we are. We are. I just, I, I got your grades done. <laughs> I started, a, like I said, I started DD for the first time. It was like the last nerd thing I put off forever. And we got a whole team together. And my dungeon master was like obsessed with it. He has like this. 60 inch LED TV that we actually use as like a game board, and he was drawing maps, all this awesome stuff. And then the virus that shall not be named happened, and we never resumed. So, I'm not a very good DD player anyway. I'm just, I'm just a barbarian, I just punch everything in the face, you know. So. <laughs> and works. I have this uncanny ability to, to roll one two times in a row, though. So, yeah, what it's is a the, talent? Pretty good. Yep. Punching your way through works 95% of the time, in D &D, I think. Like Harry Dresden, you know, he's an actual wizard and he actually chooses to play as a barbarian, you know, so. Yep. Go. It's good enough for Harry. It's good enough for me. Sarah, where are you at in Dresden? Done. You're done? I am. You're current? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So now you're like me, you got to wait. Sucks, I right? Know, it, it does suck. And, and I feel bad to say that to people who did actually have to wait a long time for peace talks, where I'm just like, oh, I got to wait. And I'm like, oh, poor you. I'm like, yeah, poor me. <laughs> <laughs> Peace Talks is another book. I feel like the Dark Tower situation. If you had to wait between Peace Talks and Battleground, I can imagine that people would have been really angry about Peace Talks because it is a prelude to <laughs> to Battleground. Like I feel like if you had a space in between those, there it's really two books that you need to read back to back. Being married to an educator, I'm loving watching Alan's real time breakdown grading papers right now. So. <laughs> it's my cat. Oh. Like she has decided that she has dementia right this second. And she's not howling for food. She's doing the dementia howl. Uh -huh. It's like, shut up, Ava. I'm literally right here. Oh, my gosh. Poor kitty. She's trying to tell you something. I mean, yeah, she's so poor. Poor cat. She's so old. Um, We're going to, me and uh, Sarah and Jimmy are about to have a stream talking about the first three uh, Dresden books. Nice. And I know Sarah's going to be like, well, guys, just, just wait until changes. Like, I just dude, that is the number one response from everyone. When I first, I was reviewing book one. So I was oh, just wait to book 12. I'm like, okay, I'll wait 12 oh, books from now. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So Sarah, wait, what, what changes and changes? Don't, I mean, I don't <laughs> think anything. Sarah, it's not just a clever name. If you say the book title changes, I'm going to, I will eject you from the stream. Like, well, now you know it. To do it, like, you can't say that. <laughs> oh my gosh, just wait till it changes. Oh my gosh, no, no. What if okay? My problem is, and I'll say this here just as the beginning as I thought I spent the first third of the book thinking that Michael was Morgan, and I'm like, why are they friends now? Like, mm -hmm. why, why is Harry friends with that with the guy from the first book who was trying to like bring him in? And then I'm like, they're not the same person, confusing M names. That guy's yeah. name was Morgan. And then I was, then I went back and skimmed what I had missed with more context. Michael's awesome. So I, I agree with you, Michael but I couldn't. Awesome. I, I liked couldn't him understand. instantly when I read that Thanks. scene in the car. Mm -hmm. at, uh, what was it? It's the third book, right? Mm -hmm. I just, I liked that character instantly. Uh, it was, I think so I've only read four, the first four books. So, but for me, that was the de de definitely the, my favorite start to a Dresden file. When he doesn't yeah. like the Harry calls them hellhounds, and he's like, Oh, my bad, heck hounds. Yeah. Like, 
This is great. Yeah, that was the, that was a book. Everybody told me, oh, the series doesn't get really good until summer night. I was like, great peril for me because it felt like a Buffy book. And, you know, I love that. Nice. You know? The three of us here, we can bully Philip. Philip, read Warlord Chronicles. It's so uh, good. Yes. Dude, I think you would eat that series. It's Phil. I think so you good. So about that. Yeah. Yeah. I need to read more Bernard Cornwell. I've only read a couple of the Saxon books, and that was like years and years and years ago. Sharp uh, so. I don't even remember them very well. I'm uh, reading book two of Sharp right now on audio, and it is tremendous. I just forgot how much. Yeah, I, I want to do the Grail one. I think the Grail one before, because Saxon stories is like what thirteen books, and I just a lot of you know, books. Yeah. I'm like Alan on that one. Do I really want to start another series? You know, well, so I think Grail Quest is three books, and I love me some you know Arthurian legend stuff. So sure, I can go. I can go back into that, even though I don't think it takes place in Arthur time. I think it's actually. Like 1600s or something like that. So I don't know. So it's so good. It's so good, Philip. Like it's so good. Now, it's, I think it's exceptional. For Sarah, it is slightly better than Empire of the Vampire. This is not true. This is it's, not true. It's this, one star better, Sarah. This is you being hyperbolic again. I gave the first book a four stars because the, the beginning of Winter King. There's a lot of setup. The yeah. first half of Winter King is a lot of setup. So I took a star off for that. I gave book two five stars. I gave I book two five so stars. <laughs> you're saying that Winter King is equal in quality to Empire of the Vampire. Again, That's Sarah, this is why I quit rating stuff on Goodreads. Because yeah, I mean, this, this is where the stars the come to oh, bite you gave this plot. book four stars and this one's only three. Are you willing Sarah, to admit? Right Sarah, here, all you have to say is the words five star strumpet to Alan. Look. All right. I mean, that's the counter argument here. Look, look, look. I need to know if Sarah's willing to admit right now that those <laughs> books are of the same quality. They are the I same. I have never, I have never said that they are of the same quality. That's apples. I apple thought apple. that Empire of the Vampire was entertaining. It was an entertaining book. I think that the Warlord Chronicles are an exceptional work of fiction in all respects. Not according to your star rating. <laughs> Get out of here. Your star rating, those are identical. <laughs> Wait, how much how much room for nuance is there in, in these stars anyway? See, Alan is Alan is fighting against himself right now because he is giving you reasons to dislike star ratings. Exactly. Exactly. Mission. Let's just abolish them, right? Like they're doing it fine when they're done right. <laughs> only, only when they're done wrong, like in this case, that they become a problem. So I don't have to read smarter. I have hard to for me to compare better. Empire of the Vampire and Winter King. They're so different, but man, I loved Empire of the Vampire. Like I loved it. Mike. Mike. I know you don't like Jay Kristoff. I think I think he's underrated. I love him. I think he's great. But I know I also like just really creative cuss words. So I admit that I'm I'm I am lowly educated when it comes to stuff like that because i do love me like some really good just like ridiculous you know calling people like you know twat goblin and shit i love that i can't get okay. over that. that's the stuff i love about abercrombie too you sarah know? in your review i just need you to qualify and be like okay so in a vacuum this is four stars when compared to winter king it is not even one that's all i need you to write just in okay. your good reads just write that for me and then we can uh we can agree to be friends again i'll even put it there right now <laughs> <laughs> because as Jake Bishop accused me, I'm really bad at Goodreads. He was like, you can't look at Sarah's Goodreads because it's eight months behind. Which oh my is, gosh, is it really? No, but it's at least two. So I'll go and find it right now. Nice. The Winter King. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even on Goodreads. But... Philip. <laughs> it's so weird because he's on Twitter, but he's not on anything else. I do not understand that, Philip. Well, Winter I mean, I'm technically on Twitter. I can't say I understand it. <laughs> It's like when I tried to get my mom to get a TiVo. She's like, it just sounds too complicated. I'm like, your PCR is way more complicated than this. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do putter around on Twitter. It was an experiment, I guess. Okay. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you're uh, revising it right now, Sarah? Is that? Yeah. Oh, I <laughs> just... What are the are you going to put something like an reading? asterisk there? Is it like Alan made me write this or? It's an Alan addendum. No, it's going to be, I have seen reason, and this is the addendum that I am putting because Alan has convinced me through his eloquence and mm. persuasive oratory that I was incorrect in my original assessment. Ooh, Do you guys know. think there's any benefits of being on Goodreads? For me, it's just because so many people ask me, hey, what are you reading? 
that's a good way if they want to follow to know where I'm at or am I done with this book yet? And also for me to be like, did I read that? <laughs> you know, so I can remember. So yeah, that's just me. Yeah, I'm on Goodreads to like, I mean, I don't, I like star ratings, so it doesn't bother me. And also it's a way to see what everybody else is reading too. And a way to track what I am reading. Five stars reading, trumpet. I mean, that's. And I have statistics too. You can do page count. You know, yeah. what was your average page count and stuff like that. That's kind of fun. For being the five star trumpet, Philip, I have not read many five star books this year, which actually oh. filled me with incredible sadness. That so is sad. Does that yeah. just mean he, he thinks you give out too many five stars? Oh, it's no. not me. He, he gave himself that title. I think I give out too many five stars, oh, but yeah. I mean, it's fine. I think I've given out like two since like 2010. So, no, everything. Like, if I really liked it, it's freaking five stars. Yeah, that's why I quit rating. It's like I said, I wasn't giving anything five stars. I wasn't giving anything one. So, but it's like, so if you just like it, it's automatically three. I'm like, is, is three out of five now a bad score? Wait, I mean, so Mike, you never in your history on Goodreads gave anything five stars? No, I have. I have. It's oh, not wow. very often. To me, I said with me, a five-star book has to be an all-time classic. It has to be something I think 20, 50, 100 years from now, people will still be talking about. So Dune, people, Dune is obviously. Thought, yeah, yeah, exactly. Or, or, you know, like Fellowship of the Ring or something. But people are like, oh, well, that, that just brings down the statistics. I'm like, I'm not responsible for Goodreads' shitty system. <laughs> if they wanted that to be, they should have gave it, you know, out of 10 instead of out of five. I'm not right. responsible for that. Or we're giving you the opportunity to do half-stars. That's not my fault. I'm not going to skew my ratings and give something five stars because it's going to bring the average down. That's not my problem. That's Goodreads' problem. Yeah. Yeah. I have um on Goodreads because of the overall rating system. I will if it's at a a half, I tend to round up unless I'm angry at the book, in which I'll round down because I want the rating to go down. But <laughs> no, normally, it, like if it's like four and a half, I'll round up to five, especially if it's like an indie book. That doesn't have, you know, like Sanderson. I can write Sanderson one, and that's not going to budge that needle. I don't know who Evie's talking about, but I'm just going to assume it's not me. He's talking about me. He's talking about me. <laughs> it's not me either, I assure you. She's definitely Wait, talking I, don't, I can be, I've been accused of some wild stuff, but never that one. Okay. I am the five-star madam. I have created other five-star strumpets that are in my employ. Oh, I see. Ah, okay. I thought he meant a different kind of madam there. All right. Uh, Sal, I think it was Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. I think that that's one of the best fantasy books i've read in a long time so that might be it huh. i don't know so when you you give it stars is it a reflection of how much you enjoyed the book or is it a reflection just how much like i said the legacy i think the legacy over time how it'll age if how, if like i said if okay. i think people will view it as an integral to uh, you know to the genre years free from now that's kind of how i grade it okay i really enjoyed it it was five stars mm. it's more yeah, fine. i'll never i'll never slander anyone else's grading system so <clears throat> okay i mean i'll be like hey cool i read you know legends and lattes five stars you know i mean apparently i'm the only one who what is that happening with the legends and lattes thing no idea what i blame joanna i blame so joanna big? she she blamed it on petrick but i blame joanna she was the first one i saw talk about it so Why seriously i think i'm the only it? booktuber who doesn't own it yet i don't have it yet <laughs> okay never mind Sarah's I think like, people, people read it. No, we're reading it next month, so I'm going to be reading it too. No slander, mint. It might be a lot of fun. I was just like, everything I hear about, I'm like, that doesn't sound like something I would enjoy. But hey, that's awesome that this guy has gotten some footing off of this. I just need to understand things. Like, like I have no opinion on it whatsoever other than I do not understand where this came from. And so it, like, I have autism, and this is my problem, as I do not handle things I do not understand and so I do, every time I see it, I'm like, what, what happened? Does like someone know a guy? Like, did, did someone win a bet? What, how, where it was, did this thing it come It was Patrick. It was Patrick. It was Patrick. And then I think people are just, some people are hungry for wholesome stories right now. I think. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think I saw even Daniel picked it up now. So it's about to take off, I guess. So, I mean, good. Where are the author. things that BookTube coalesce around sometimes? Like I said, how I joke about how I was the last person to read, uh, you know, Jade City, so I haven't done it yet, but uh, it seemed like Rage of Dragons kind of did the same thing. But, you know, you kind yeah. of understand where those are coming from. I have no idea how this one happened. No idea. Rage of Dragons, I think, suffered, a, uh, not suffered, but I think Rage of Dragons, much of the Rage of Dragons train was from the two huge booktubers who, like, absolutely, like, pushed it. 
uh, when it came out. Like the biggest booktubers or fantasy booktubers both like were like louding it like beyond because that's the only it's the only thing that I can I can figure out how that book was so divisive because we read it in uh, on on a discord and like it was it like split the discord in twain with people who mm. loved it and people who like were like why does everyone love this book I do it's like an all out war wasn't it kind yeah, of. yeah 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 it got a ton of hype from um uh, from two really big booktubers, like right when it came out. Who are we, can, you can say who they are, right? Who were who these two big booktubers? Daniel and Murphy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it was like, like they were like, oh my gosh, five stars. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, like superlative language. And all of a sudden it was everywhere. And everyone's like, uh, and I'm not accusing everyone of everyone who liked it of being like, but if we pretend like, other people liking something doesn't affect us in in some way other people liking something affects me in the opposite way i hate that thing now but like we're not robots like we can't pretend like oh no other people's opinions don't affect me yes it does yes it does stop like it affects you in some way some of us are swayed more than the others you know but no one lives in a vacuum you know what i mean so yeah, Patrick's opinion sways me quite a bit. I never. Patrick, I, I, I would have. I think I eventually would have read John Gwynn, but I wouldn't have made it a point to read it if it wasn't for Patrick. So, I, I always pretty much give him the benefit of the doubt on a lot of stuff. But you know, but we don't agree on everything. He loves Name of the Wind. He thought the last uh, the last Stormlight Archive book was great, and I thought it was miserable. So, I mean, we don't agree on everything, but I'll always take Patrick's uh, his advice if something he tells me that he thinks I'm going to like. Uh, we're kind of split on this one right now, but you know, we'll, we'll talk about that when I get a little later. But you know, hmm. there are certain people that I'll listen to. I'll take their advice for sure. And I'll admit it, Patrick's review of Books of Babel did get me shook a little bit. Although I didn't realize until Alice said that he gave it one star. So that's wild. Apparently he gave it two stars. I was corrected. No, he gave it one and a half stars and I think rounded up to two. Um, Kyle gave it one because Kyle's unreasonable. Um, this is not true, Colton, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> it's fine. Look, guys, what? Okay, so I am adapting... I am I am taking on the role that is assigned to me here because everyone else is really nice. We got to stop. Like I've got to. I am generally a very positive person, so I'm not going to say anything negative the rest of the time. I'm going to say only things that I like. Can I put a time? Oh Sarah, that was unkind. <laughs> I never claimed to be a nice person. <laughs> Even your cat thinks that's a bunch of baloney. Huh? My cat. My wife got home, and so my cat is now calling because she's home. Yeah. I mean, look, I trust, I, like, I want to say I can't trust Patrick, but Patrick does like a lot. Well, you know, uh, he loves Name of the Wind. He loves Poppy War, and him and I will never see eye to eye on that one. But we both love like Haney's. We both love John Gwynn. We both love John A Joe Abercrombie. John Abercrombie. Oh, right? crap. Kyle. Summoned Kyle. I actually like Name of the Wind. I I'm going to come out. Uh, publicly most people that. do that's why i got an unpopular opinion it's it's a beautiful book i understand why people don't like it though i i can get that like if you like books where things happen then you might not like name of the wind so uh but it's a beautiful book uh so yeah hello kyle kyle just came to challenge your last statement you're doing well though <laughs> Except I don't know, maybe saying "Oh, Kyle," like I think that counts as not positive. Kyle so, liked I mean, Kyle liked something that I really liked recently, and it it like we created like a uh, a thirty years piece, well, thirty days piece, I guess. Um, but I don't remember what it was, so maybe I dreamed it. Yes, Sal, it is in her DNA makeup. She has to be nice. That's true. She has to. Yep. Although Sarah, you're just now boosting your canadian booktuber credentials i think right yeah that's true i did say sorry earlier sorry like she's full of sores she's sorry do right canadians now, finally, make american accents uh i don't think so really y'all too nice so you yeah. can't do it you can't make fun of fun of our accents we do no wrong <laughs> We would I don't know. I, I, basically, what I know about Canadians, I learned from South Park, and it's probably not the best place to go to. So. <laughs> My head does, in fact, or, move. 
or the the guys from Strange Brew. You guys even remember that movie, Strange Brew? With the oh god, I can't remember who was in it. It's uh Rick Moranis, and I can't remember the other guy's name, of but uh, yeah. yeah, it's where I learned the word uh, hoser from. Was from that. I, I had no idea that hoser was. And this is a really weird movie. I can't believe I'm talking about Strange Brew. You guys, look it up. It's funny. It's very very funny. But uh, yeah, yeah. I've well, never met a mean Canadian, so you know uh, I've talked to you. I've talked to Mr. Erickson, obviously. I've talked to Nicholas Eames, all the nicest people. Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm one quarter Canadian. I don't know if that makes me nice or not. But. Yeah, Bob and Doug McKenzie. There you go. I knew someone would know. Philip, there we go. Why you're so nice, Philip? I miss Stephen Erickson. Tell him hello from me when you speak to him next. Okay, yeah, he's. I think he's still touring in France right now. Cool. Well, what sucks, Philip, is I'm gonna miss ICFA because it literally is right in the middle of my Rome trip with my kids. So I'm freaking going to really? miss it here. Yeah. Like hey, Kyle's listen to a bunch of books. I think these are supposed to be books that, uh, that, that you guys agree on. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess we did agree on that. And Warlord. Maybe that was it. Maybe it was Warlord. Yeah, Philip, my trip starts before ICFA and ends afterwards. Oh, it was Ogres. It was Ogres. Yeah, Ogres was great. We have a temporary season. Wow, that's a shame. No, so. I know. It really sucks. But I mean, there's nothing I can do. I'm taking 32 kids to Rome. Oh yeah, so, Jake Bishop. Yeah, so I didn't know he was Canadian, but yeah, it checks out. He's nice, He's super nice. Alan, isn't Ogres written in second person? Is that true? Mm -hmm. Is that the read? Who wrote Ogres? Who's the author here? Tchaikovsky. It's a novella. It's oh, a novella. okay. All right. I think I think it's I think it's fantastic. Is there anything by Tchaikovsky you don't like? And I'm not. I don't mean that snarky. I mean like, have you read anything you didn't really care for? I have not. No, I have not. Um. Like I, I think the first four books in Shadow of the After are not like they're not all of the same quality. I think uh, book three is weaker than the other ones. Um, but I've read those Guns of the Dawn, Elder, Elder Race, and Ogres, two novellas, and I haven't read anything that I've disliked. I like Tchaikovsky. For me, he has the he like splits the uprights between like descriptive and like his his authorial voice. I really like if that makes any sense. So it just reads really, really easy. I read his books very, very quickly. Um, but it's, but it also has description of stuff. Like it's not just like white room stuff. Um, so no, I haven't, I'm sure I will find something that I don't enjoy. I just haven't found it yet. But again, I haven't read a ton yet. Yes, we oh, know. Andrew. Yeah. How did you have, have, your, in the chat you have your, your monthly uh, TBR videos. You just like your monthly DNF videos, Andrew. Hey, I'd watch. I'd watch for sure. Oh, Chiago, I'm definitely going to live stream from Rome when we're over there. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. It's going to be freaking awesome. Here I am, live at the Coliseum. It's going to be awesome. Oh, nice. When are you going, Alan? Did you already say that? I'm sorry. Uh, spring break next year, so middle of March next year. March, yeah. Going on a cruise in July, taking the kids. I don't know how that's going to go over. It should be fun. Wow. Philip in the chat. You are the first person that Zara and I have recommended that book to who has who has not liked it. Literally, you are the first person that we know of that hasn't liked that. I'm sorry you did not enjoy the folding knife. That makes me very very sad. Is that off the casting book? That's KJ Parker, KJ Parker, who is definitely not going to be for everybody. But I think the folding. I think Philip is going to like KJ Parker. This this Philip. This Philip. Yeah, Philip. Yeah. Doctor Doctor Philip Jace is going to like it. But. <laughs> I'm sorry, Andrew. It was men I love. I'd watch. Mike, you dislike the ocean as much as I do. How are you feeling about going on a cruise? Uh, well, you know, cruises don't really bother me that much. I mean, they did the first one. It, it, it did. Uh, but, you know, I, I think with that is you can always just go inside and it just feels like you're in a casino or something or a hotel and you're fine. But, I mean, do I like to just sit out on the deck and stare at the ocean? No, not really. Wait, wait, wait. You guys don't like the ocean. Mike, you live, is real. You uh, live near the coast. Sarah, you also live near the coast. Yeah, I live near the coast, but I don't go dive in it, you know? <laughs> I mean, uh, you would think you'd go a little further inland or something. No, it, it, it's it's just, just one of those things. It's it's not a, it's not a people like, oh, are well, you like afraid of sharks? Or it's, not, it's, just, it's just like open space. It's just something you can't really control, you know? I don't think I'd do too well in space, wow. outer space either, you know? It's just, it's just open space freaks me out. And the thing was, I thought, oh, you're just being a big sissy about it. And then when me and my wife went for our honeymoon, uh to the bahamas and we went out like a kayak in the ocean we got like about 200 feet from shore my heart rate was just like and i was like no i can't do it i gotta go back so yeah it's, it's just like a thing but 
on the when you're on a cruise ship, it's basically you're on like on a floating skyscraper. So mm-hmm. you don't even really notice, you know, too much. But I'm more concerned about the kid. My youngest kid is like real big about like routine. So it's gonna be interesting to see how he does, you know, away from everything he knows for seven days. But you know, they have all you can eat food like everywhere nonstop. So I think he'll be happy. Because he can put it down. He can put it down. My ocean qualms are ocean creatures, specifically whales. I yeah, I'm not a fan of those either. I mean, <laughs> your 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 whales freak you out. <clears throat> I'm really scared. I uh, it's actually a lot better. So I used to be really frightened, and it pro- I'm sure it could have met criteria for a phobia if you go by like DSM criteria. Like pictures wow. would scare me, seeing them on TV would scare me. And funnily enough, when Juliet, my daughter, was born, because kids are developing the empathy part of their brain. They find it hilarious when other people are scared of things. So she found this whale phobia to be absolutely hysterical and decided that blue whales were going to be her favorite animal ever. And so then we had to buy all these books about whales and I had to read them to her. One time she brought me over to like the TV section in Walmart because we also don't have a TV. So like they never watched any. And so whenever they saw the TVs at Walmart, they'd be like, whoa, this is, what is this? And so she brought me over there one time. I was really excited. She's like, mom, you have got to see something. And so I come over and what is it? But like blue planet and this big whale, like jumping up on the TV. And she's like watching my face to see the reaction because she's loving that. I'm so scared. She put a toy whale in my pocket once when I went to the gas station, I went to take out my wallet and I pulled out this whale toy. And when I got home, she was like, did you find my present for you? I was like, you're deranged. Like, (laughs) where did you come from? Anyway, it really helped. So I, like, over time became less scared. And we actually went whale watching last summer. And I was very frightened. But I made it through. I think it might be a lot of of, uh, Lovecraft stuff for me, too. A lot of Lovecraft stuff. You can tell he was scared of the ocean, too. Because he he talked about all kinds of shit coming from the ocean. And, yeah, that, that might play a little bit into it. So, I mean, you think about how you know because of uh, you know water pressure stuff how much of the ocean we can't explore imagine the things that are down there that we have never even seen before you know that's nightmare fuel stuff i can't even watch like the planet earth stuffs on the ocean because i'm just like i'm just too creeped out by it so yeah Yeah. so it is more about the space for me but yeah if i was in it i'd be definitely be scared of what was in it with me for sure creepy slimy things in there yeah no thanks there are certain places man was not meant to tread and i think that is one of them (laughs) agreed Scared of whales, but not of Cthulhu. Well, you know, one's fictional, one's very, very real. So <laughs> I'm not scared of sharks either. Like, I'm not, like the the whale thing is just because they're very big. I think. I don't know. Yeah. No, well, my wife's kind of scared of dolphins, which is kind of funny. Could you think of dolphins as being like you know like the defenders and stuff like that? And it's like she has this weird theory about how dolphins will take you down and try to rape you or something. And I'm like, what? I have never heard this before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I had never heard of this before when she brought it up, and then I Google it, and apparently it's very much a thing. So there you go, guys. I think they actually do have intercourse for the sake of pleasure, as opposed to just reproduction, which is rare. For- yeah, apparently, they're very, very enamored with humans. So mm-hmm. be careful. Is all I'm saying. You're going to do one of them swim with dolphins things. Make sure it's like at an amusement park under controlled circumstances, because (laughs) I'm not saying that she's right, but I'm not saying that she's wrong. So there we go. (laughs) My wife has a lot of things like that. Alan, it'll make me look up the way that you just looked up when I said that. Like what the, my, um, my students have a, um, they can do a really good impression of it because I have students in my class at lunch all the time. So I'll be sitting there doing work on my computer and they'll say something that is, that is super weird, like what you just said. And like, they can do the good impression of me turning from my computer because they'll talk and I won't say anything. And one, only one of them in the conversation will see me go. <laughs> <laughs> How about this hot take? Oh, come on, Brent. Now I love Empire of the Vampire. This is the only guy on the Discord that did not like Winter King. Did you, I, Brent, did you read Winter King? <laughs> I think that, no, no, no. I, I, I didn't mean it like that. I mean, did you read it physically versus listen to it? I think that listening to the Winter King is the only way to experience it because because of that beginning half, which is, I mean, it is kind of rough um, if you were going to read it. And, you know, how are you supposed to know that that's how you spell Gorfithid, right? Um, but I would Jonathan know. Keeble is absolutely phenomenal. Like he is what I read. I listen to audiobooks now because of Jonathan Keeble because he was just absolutely phenomenal. So... So if I'm not, I'm not discounting your opinion, 
but I would suggest <laughs> listening to it. Um, and that might improve your experience. Lots of confirmation about dolphins in the chat, by the way. So, if, so for people who seem to know all these facts about dolphins, there's actually a really cool book called The Truth About Animals, which is this really interesting work of nonfiction that is written by a zoologist who talks about how we anthropomorphize animals. We ascribe human values onto animals. And so we identify with them in ways that make them feel human and how that is inaccurate. And that's not how the animal kingdom works. And it's all of these really bizarre facts. And some of them are ones that would make Alan make that face. But it's such a cool book. I loved it so much. I hope there's nothing about dogs in there because you, you can't shatter my delusions about dogs, okay? No, there's a hyena chapter. Oh, yeah, hyena is fine. I don't like hyenas that much, so yeah. No, you will after you read this. Oh, okay. They're nice, actually? They, they, they get a bad rap? Not nice, but oh. necessary for, you know, the continuation of life on the savannah. Oh, God. <laughs> the, the dance... Yeah, uh, Mike, come, come you want to uh, I imagine it kind of like one of them like Russian babushka dances. I don't know. I just have a hard time picturing Roland, Mr. Smiling, would make my face break doing anything like that. So that was like a that was like one of the bigger twists, I think, in Dark, in Dark Tower that Roland actually like dance. I mean, you saw Eddie and Suzanne and, 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 and Jake are like, what's going on right now? So, yeah, that yeah. was the. That was very, 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 very weird, but that was kind of like... They were all giving Roland the same look that Alan gives his students. <laughs> or, or my wife. We're talking about dolphins. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I, I don't think I could probably duplicate that dance. So, all the fish. Why don't you try? Hey, horny dolphins apparently is a thing, okay? I'm just saying, don't Google it unless you want to know, okay? That's all I'll say. Google <laughs> it. <laughs> we flip her the same way. Yeah, I'm just saying. Just, just go Google it. Huh. I think if you read the Mortal Arthur, author, you're obviously you're going to have one of those things where you have this idea of this is the legend, this is the way that it goes. Because that's me. For, I mean, I was all about that. But I think reading Winter King, I liked that it was different to me. I was like, I don't need a retelling of this tale that I already enjoy. I like the way that it was done in a different kind of view. So. I don't think anyone can read that. I can't read that. Too but. fuzzy. Winter King, says yeah. Alan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think you'd enjoy either one. I, I, obviously, uh, if you read Mallory, you got to expect it's, you know, it's hundreds of years old. So it's going to be a little different kind of read. Whereas I think Winter King is going to be more if you're into, you know, modern fantasy. I think that you would enjoy yeah. that. Quite yeah, I, bit, I would add that if you're going to read Mallory, just be prepared to have long stretches of boredom because it's not. It's not like it's not an exciting read. I'll, I'll yeah. say I, mean, yeah, I love it's, it, it's, but it's not an exciting read. It's very much doing homework. Yeah. Yes, it's not yeah. novelization in the way that you right. It's mm -hmm. it's medieval, uh, but it is. I think the the book that gave the Arthurian legends the, their their form that we regard as authoritative today. I mean, that's just the. There's so many different Arthurian stories, and they go all over the place, and you know. You know, the Chrétien de Troyes added Lancelot. He wasn't originally part of it at all. You know, there's just so many different stories that go all over. But but Mallory really did sort of consolidate it all and gave it this mm -hmm. form that we sort of recognize today as being the basic legend. So. There's things in, in Warlord Chronicles that if you are real big into the Arthurian legend, it'll be tough for you. Like what he does with Lancelot is just like, what is this? But you know what? I, I actually love what he did in that series, those things, because... I didn't feel like I knew it was coming, you know, and I, I appreciated that. So no, he absolutely like that. Like that's what Lancelot is. This whole like freaking romanticizing. Romanticizing. Yeah. I do not enjoy the <laughs> heroic and um, I think that Lancelot. I call them is, chivalrous and pious. Now look at him. I think that Lancelot <laughs> is made into this kind of heroic. Um, yeah. Woman's pious, dealer? virtuous figure, um, mm -hmm. even though he is. A woman he is here. stealing his best friend's best wife. friend's wife, which is not really a virtuous characteristic, in my opinion. So it pleases me that uh, Cornwell leans into that and shows you what Lancelot was probably more like than this 
than the Lancelot that you see in freaking every, you know, well, movie. Said, or you know, remember, show guys, that history yeah. is written by the winners, and I guarantee most of these people weren't near as virtuous as they make them out to be. So. Yeah, well, the best yeah. Lancelot, best Lancelot by far is John Cleese and Monty Python's version. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is the only, yes, he's the only Lancelot that I don't, that I do not actively dislike. <laughs> I am not a I am not a fan of Lance. Talk about Monty Python. All I think about is like Brave Sir Robin, just because that scene just makes the song the song itself just makes me laugh so hard. So, oh yeah, was oh, that an underrated movie? Well, I didn't think it was like I don't I don't think my kids kind of understand that humor because I tried showing them some of some Monty Python. They just they just did not get it. So, oh, my know. daughters love it. They Maybe love it hasn't it. translated that well, or they just they just really aren't on that level of, of of comedy yet. I think, but yeah, God, so good. Yeah. It's one of those that, like, you know, a movie's really funny when you've seen it a million times, you know it's coming, and you still laugh. Like Spaceballs or any Mel Brooks, really. I've seen these movies dozens of times, and I still laugh like it's the first time I've ever seen it. And it's something that my wife finds, like, pat me on the head. Like, oh, that's just so adorable of you that you know what's coming, and you still laugh at it. I'm like, look, funny is funny, and Mel Brooks was funny, and so was Monty Python. So oh, yeah. I'll always laugh at it. Philip's like, what are movies? <laughs> That's not true. Philip just watched um, 13th Warrior with and 13th Thor. Warrior. Yeah. We had our, we had our, know, our conversation. I know that's that's like a big step up for him. I mean, he probably busted out like a laser disc or something to watch. The, I'm proud of him. I did rent the DVD from the library. <laughs> of course you did. Yeah. Oh, Eve, it's one of the funniest movies ever made, man. Oh, my God. Blazing Saddles. God, my sides hurt from watching that movie. It's so fun. John Cleese, you want to talk about a treasure right there? That guy, he's oh, yeah. John Cleese is one of those kind of guys that got like that infectious laugh. If like if it's just him laughing, I start laughing too. Yeah, I, I like John Cleese and Fish Called Wanda. That's a good. Movie. I haven't seen the new Top Gun yet, but I've heard great things about it. And I talked about this in the last couple of weekly updates. Like, look, Tom Cruise may be a weirdo, but that dude's pretty much automatic for me on cinema. I mean, most his movies are always at least enjoyable for me if you don't count like Oblivion. But everything else is like pretty much like awesome. Yeah, I enjoy it. My students are raving over Top Gun, but it, I can't tell if like it's because they like it because they're also real big on the Morbius meme where it's <laughs> a terrible movie, but they're saying it's really good. So right. I can't tell if they actually think Top Gun's good. I hope because of that, movie. Morbius gets so many digital cells that they have to make a sequel. <laughs> they're making a sequel <laughs> for 24 on Disney+. Plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, because yeah. of the meme. Yeah. I didn't like Top Gun one, so I'm probably not going to see Top Gun two. I don't. I've never seen Top Gun. I I haven't seen Top Gun since I was probably maybe like a preteen. So I told my wife I need to. It's on Netflix. I need to watch it again before I see the new movie. But I knew I was like I knew with Tom Cruise is going to have it's going to have you know all practical. There's going to be no CGI in that movie. It's all going to be real jets and shit. And it's probably going to be like amazing because the stunts because that's just what the guy does. So I was like, you may think the guy's a weirdo, you may not like him at all, but I just I admire how seriously he takes his craft. He will do, he will put in the time to do everything. And the guy's like, a, like you look at the last mission impossible movie, the guy not only like learned how to fly a helicopter, but he's flying this helicopter and acting and doing an action scene while he's flying this helicopter. That's how dedicated this guy is to his craft. And I just, I admire that. Plus he played the stat and he was a horrible pick to play the stat and, and he was great at it. So, you know, there we go. Yeah. I've always given him the benefit of the doubt since then. Philip, what's your favorite Tom Cruise movie? It's like, it's oh, fun. you had to ask me that. Uh, I'm not the biggest Tom Cruise fan, to be honest with you. Um, what's the weird one that he made with Nicole Kidman? Uh, I saw I shot Philip. Yeah. No, Philip. <laughs> no, that's, that's one of the, look, even like pretty much nude prime Nicole Kidman didn't fit, save that movie for me. Uh, so. that, wasn't, that wasn't my reason, of course, but. Philip, you know. there isn't. Philip, would you please elucidate? <laughs> no. Would you like to no. <laughs> Alan, I actually don't really have a high regard for that film, but um, I don't know. I mean, he's he's made a lot of movies. Obviously, he's hugely successful, uh, but I just never really connected with him. I never felt like he was actually that good of an actor. He was always just being Tom Cruise, I thought, but... I yeah. will say he does. He does always play himself in most movies, but I just I yeah. admire his what he'll he'll put his body through for the, the sake of a movie and what he'll learn. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. You got to give the guy credit for that for sure. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, he's he's not somebody I like. I'll, I won't see. Oh, that movie has Tom Cruise in it. I better watch that. And, who, you know, who is who's an actor that you see and you're like, I'll watch anything with that actor in it. Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, that's good. He only makes like one movie every eight years. And that's about how. Well, often he, you yeah, watch he stopped movie, right? making movies. So <laughs> also, Meryl Streep is brilliant. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's a few. Who so are, Philip are just, likes like the actors of the generation. So hey, that's pretty. That's pretty good. Mine were I really like. Um, Denzel Washington. I also sure really like. I like yeah. Kevin Klein. Um, he's in a lot of really pretentious. He's brilliant. Stuff, yeah, which I like. Like The Emperor's Club is one of my favorite movies. Um, I like William Daniels a lot, Mr. Feeney, but he did other things besides that. Uh, but he was a stage actor uh, mostly. Um, I think that's it. There's no. There's no. There is no um, movie star currently that if they're in a movie, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to go see that. Like and now, it's just a bunch of Chris's. And uh, people who are, I guess, I guess attractive. And I mean, oh, Sandra Bullock. I really liked her back in the day. Um, we were watching Speed with the kids the other day. And I was like, man, she was a babe. Still is. She's oh, I, I, I like Speed. I make Speed references um, when I was, I made a Speed reference when I was driving the kids down to our competition, the students, and they didn't get it. I was like, I was like, I cannot slow this. I cannot slow this van below 55 miles an hour, guys, or we'll blow up. And they were like, what? And I'm like, never mind. Never mind. Just moved on. Even yes. I'm kind of somewhere in between on this, on the Obi-Wan series. It's like, I think it's fine. The people are like, oh, it's amazing. I think we've just, our standards have gotten lowered so much for Disney Star Wars. If it's not just like pure dog shit, we're like, oh, it's amazing. <laughs> you know? so I, think, <laughs> I think as a big Star Wars fan, I think that's kind of where I'm at. I think Ewan McGregor is always great. I mean, I don't think I've ever watched a movie with that guy. I'm like, oh, he really brought that movie down. <laughs> I think he really plays that character really, really well. I think the villains on it are terrible, but you know, there's other things about that I like. It's better than Book of Boba Fett, but you know. I was thinking of watching it actually. I, I mean, I don't usually watch TV. Phillip, have you watched Star Wars? I'm just curious. I watched Star Wars the movie in 1977 when it came out. In the so, theater? In the theater. Oh wow! See, I was. I think Return of the Jedi was the only one I caught in the theater. So. Yeah, well, I'm a little bit older than you are. So. A little bit. Uh, now, Sarah, now, speaking of Star Wars, I am really, really excited for you to do this because I don't think you've read it before. You're going to be doing a read-along of the New Jedi Order? Yes. So um, That's amazing. <laughs> my husband is a huge Star Wars fan, and uh, he's read a lot of the EU, and I have read none of it. So yeah. he's actually never read New Jedi Order because it was hard for him to get his hands on the books, I think. Like, he just has been buying them through, like, secondhand stores over the course of his life. And he refuses to buy any of the ones that have the Legends, like, title on them because that he's just... Yeah, I have all my originals because I was reading when they were coming out. But yeah, He's not uh, the biggest fan of Disney Star Wars. So he, uh, he has not read those ones, and he's going to read them. Your husband sounds very intelligent. He's very, he's very intense about what he likes and what he doesn't like. Like there's, if Philip is like very nuanced in like, you know, I appreciated this about, so he's like, he will flat out be like, no, I hated it. It was garbage. I'm like, Andrew, you can't just say it was garbage. Like you <laughs> actually give some reasoning. He's like, I don't have a booktube channel. I could say whatever I want. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I love the Star Wars EU. I think it'll always just, that'll be real canon to me. And the Disney stuff will always be fan fiction I, I, to me because uh, it's kind of like what I said about the new like Halloween movies. It's like, look, if you're going to scrap the canon and say we're going to do something different, you better do it better than what was there. And I don't feel like they did in either situation. So uh, with me, is, is all the EU a home run? No. Is all of the New Jedi Order a home run? Absolutely not. But I think it's got some really great stuff in it. And it might be just because, to me, that was during the time when I thought we're never going to get more Star Wars. So this is Star Wars in my head. So I'll always be kind of. Uh, attach this stuff and, and and yeah i'm pretty sure me and your hubs could probably crack a beer and get along quite well how, how are you mike on episodes one two and three the, the prequels I, I wasn't wild about them i was in denial for like the first two movies that they weren't good movies okay and uh and i i still to this day i still think revenge of sith is pretty good uh but the thing was is i feel like the disney the one good thing that the disney sequels did is it validated the prequels and made them like at least they feel like Star Wars. Made them look know? good. <laughs> so yeah. that's kind of where I'm at with them. So I'll, I'll watch. I think they're they're fun for the memes in the least. The memes are really really good for it. So and I mean yeah. even my kids like go hello there. You know like Obi Wan and stuff. So you know it's it's got good stuff. General Kenobi. Whenever my kid comes down the stairs and we're gonna like lightsaber fight and stuff. So huh. it's good for things like that. 
Yes, okay. the music is good. My yeah. uh, my son's a big Star Wars fan too, and he loves to orchestrate battles with like the uh, the soundtrack and the in the background. The duel of the fates is like oh, my my kids. They, they'll be lightsaber fighting. They'll be going do 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 do. Yeah, so they're yeah they do it. Yeah, yeah. The, the sequel trilogy didn't even deserve John Williams' music. His music's just too good for those movies. <laughs> it's really sad. I think one thing that Andrew found really tough is that he was really excited when this when the new movies came out because. He felt like this is going to be a sequel trilogy. There's going to be a female Jedi and it's going to be something that Juliet and I can watch together and she will love Star Wars. And now she'll have like these yeah. movies with this female Jedi to watch. And then like he just pretends they don't exist. Like my, my kids are really concrete. And so he told them jokingly that there are only six Star Wars movies. And then when they found out that there were like a seven, eight, nine, they got into this argument where like my older one was like, there's nine. And my son's like, there's not. Daddy said there's only six. <laughs> I'm like, guys, it's okay. <laughs> but I think I used to be like, what prequels? What are you talking about? They never made no prequels. Now I'm just like, what sequels? What are you talking about? It's kind of about like, Philip keeps talking about this Dark Tower movie. I'm like, what Dark Tower? What are you talking about? There is no Dark Tower movie. They've never made it. What a missed opportunity. Right? Yeah. God, yeah. I, I stumped out for years. 20 years, I was like, they need to make this into a movie. And then when it came out, I didn't even go to the theater and see it. Gunslinger. Like, not Dark there, Tower. <laughs> there is enough. Gunslinger is not too long. There is enough material in Gunslinger to have a faithful adaptation of Gunslinger. I don't know why they didn't do that. Because Definitely. Tony. Tony okay. I, I said with that, with the, with that movie... Have Tom Cruise play him. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Thomas Jane would be great as Roland. Uh, but here's the thing: I think I feel like someone handed the the studio exec the seven book box set, and they turned around, they read the description on the back, and they said, "Let's make a movie." The problem is from like books one, three, five, and seven in that movie, and it's like they think that they have to throw everything in there because they don't think that it's going to do well enough. They don't think it's going to do well enough with just one book's worth of material. And so they're trying to like throw in everything that they think everyone would like. And it's the same reason that video game movies are terrible. They ignore what, pe what the original fans liked about it in an, in an attempt to make it um, broad, more broadly popular. And then it appeals to nobody. It doesn't please the fans. It doesn't please the general populace. And it's just a, it's just a waste. That's why I like that they're on TV doing more of this, you know, adapt adapting um, fantasy books. Well, some of them, um, but they like the gunslinger. They could have made the gunslinger. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's only. It's less than three hundred pages. They could have made the gunslinger. Most of it's rolling walking. I wish the Amazon series had gotten picked up because they had filmed the pilot and it didn't get picked up. But they were starting with Wizard and Glass, and they were going to tell the backstory first. They were going to do it like in that chronological order. And I was like, oh, I was so hopeful for it, and they didn't pick it up. But you know, they picked up Will and Time instead. We know how that went. <laughs> uh, I do have to. I will retract a little bit of my Tom Cruise hate. He did make Rain Man. That's a good film. And also Jerry McGuire. I think is I a love Jerry McGuire. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So that's that's Tom Cruise at his best. I, I think if you pull up his like his filmography, you'll be surprised how many of his movies you've actually seen and probably enjoyed. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Evie, I love the original Willow. Love it, love it. And I think what I said in my weekly update is I trust Disney continuing uh beloved 80s series as much as i trust pepe Le Pew with my wife uh i don't feel like they take care with anything like this but i will admit that trailer looks really good it really does it, it looks like they've actually at least watched the movie so that's encouraging it does look good and i and i want fantasy stuff to do well so we get more of it so fingers crossed it does look really good I'm a great sorcerer, greater than Roselle, greater than you even. Peck, 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 peck. Yes, I, I hope I hope Val Kilmer has a, at least a cameo in there somewhere. I, I did hear he has a cameo in Top Gun, so that, that, that's exciting. But I, I think that guy, Val Kilmer, like he can't even like talk on his own anymore. He's got to talk with like a machine now or something. He's so he's so messed up. So. Oh wow. But yeah, I'm excited about it. I want, I want, that's why I, like all the hate for like the Witcher and stuff. I was like, look, it may not be following the books very well now, but I was like, I think it's at least watchable and I just want more fantasy stuff to do better. So we get more of it. Cause I got all these series. That's why I was mad about HBO doing another uh, Song of Ice and Fire series. Like they got all these just awesome fantasy series, HBO, and you've got money, you've got the clout now you can make something and people will give it a chance. And yeah, they don't, you know, they, but I do think House of Dragon looks pretty good. So, 
We'll see. If the Green Bone series actually gets made, I think that would make a good TV series. Has the has it been, the rights been purchased already? I think so by Peacock, maybe or. Hmm. Well, uh, but Bad Wolf has Warlord Chronicles, and I thought that had a good chance. And then I look at what they did with Doctor Who, and I'm like, ah, eh, probably not. So, Sarah. it's kind of, I've gotten to that point now where it's like I used to like beg for stuff to get adapted. Now, I like beg for it not to be, just because it's going to be like because all they'll ever say is like, well, we're not going to follow the book very much. We're going to do our own thing. I'm like, why the fuck are you doing it? You know, I mean, I don't. Do I need it to be page for page? No, but I want it to at least be recognizable to what I read. It needs to be, be careful what you wish for, right? Yeah. 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 But it's hard though, because I think because of the different, it's a different medium, right? I mean, you're telling a story on screen, you're not going to be able to replicate a book. That's just how it is. You know, even if it's a TV series, you're not going to be able to do it. Even, you know, there's just certain things that you can do better in a book and certain things you can do better on screen, right? Mm -hmm. So they got to change it somehow. But then, of course, how far they go is, you know, up to, I guess everybody has their own, like, take on that, right? Like, mm -hmm. some people are okay with changing, you know, certain fundamental things, like maybe folding two characters into one character, like they did on the Game of Thrones show, right? They had to do that, I think, multiple times because you could not have that many threads going on in that show. It just would mm -hmm. not have worked. So it made sense to fold characters, multiple characters into one or to eliminate certain threads altogether as much as you might have liked those characters. Um, but you got to do like it. answer this for him. I'm pretty sure he hasn't seen the Mission Impossible movies, but have you seen the Mission Impossible movies, Bill? I, I have seen, uh, I probably saw like the first one. Uh, and if I saw the whole thing, I'm not sure or not. I might've seen a long time ago yeah. pieces of it. <laughs> it was a long time ago. So I, I think I have seen the first one. I can, I can say that with 80% certainty. Uh, but then I the recommend him. I think I said, I feel like that's, that's past James Bond is like my favorite spice here. And I love James Bond. So huh. it's just, it's just weird. Those sequels just get better and better. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm sure it's good. It's good action-packed stuff, uh, and he does do great stunt scenes. That right there, shelf-centered. I hate that. You got that with Dark Tower. Oh, there's another path of the beam. So what you're doing is you're using a clever line that only the book fans will know to tell them, I'm going to take a shit in your mouth right now by telling you I'm not going <laughs> to follow the book. Ha ha. But I know this term, so now you've got to like me. It's just it's bullshit. I hate it so much. <laughs> little time like i defended it and i got so much shit for it and now i'm just like why did i defend that garbage you know so, well i think it was episode eight that broke you mike i well me and matt talked about it. i was like we really liked episode four and then i, got I thought four, 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 and eight was just like unwatchable four so. through seven i thought was actually some there was some good television in there uh some good storytelling but then eight was i don't know anyone who liked eight um so yeah. That's it. That's it, Brent. They feel like, oh, well, we can't do this because people will consider that campy. I'm like, if you in the wrong hands, think about something like Melisandre from from uh, Game of Thrones. You could have made that really campy. You know, the night is dark and full of terrors. They could have made that really campy if they wanted to, but like demon babies and shit. But they made it awesome. They embraced it. They went for it. I don't know. I don't know why they're why adapt fantasy if you're scared of it. You know? you know who's good about that? Peter Jackson is somebody who he's just like let's go for it. You know, he, he will make things. If, if there are oliphants in a scene, he's going to make them like three times bigger than they are in the book. Right. I mean, he, that's just Peter Jackson's MO, I think. And it worked really well in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I'm just like, if you ain't got, if you ain't got the cojones to go for it with fantasy, then just, just don't adapt it, you know? And then again, like I said, I don't think it has to be paid. I mean, Game of Thrones wasn't page for page from a song of ice and fire, but it followed the spine of that story. It followed what made it great. I think, you know, while they had source material to adapt and with will of time, I'm just like, you guys keep talking about how you're like such big book fans. I'm like, then why do you keep changing everything? I don't get it. I don't get it. So yeah, here's what it is. Yeah, I think Alan is working. I got a, I got a text. No, I admire his, uh, his ability to multitask. I got a text <laughs> saying, "Hey, um, are your grades in? I'm getting, I'm getting uh, messages about it. I'm like, y'all freaking like, <sighs> school's over. If your grades are bad, what, do you, what is your plan? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do about it? Do you think you're going to change your grade over the summer? Is that what you think is gonna happen? Do you think I'm going to go to the school 
and reteach it to you over the summer? So who cares? Who cares? Like the kids who are freaking out, like if you're like, you, you know what grade you have. Like there's kids who know that they failed, who are too afraid to tell their freaking parents. And so the parents are like, well, we need to know what my kid, your kid failed. Like, and your kid knows he failed. He just isn't, he's just too afraid to tell you. So leave me alone. I'm working on it. Like the reason my grades aren't, you want to know why my grades aren't in? Because I work, because I do my job at work. That's why. You know why all these other people's grades are in? Because they sit there and let their kids watch movies all day. That's what they do. So <laughs> sorry, give me a minute. I'm working on it. So, you know, Sarah, I said, I feel like uh, your husband and I could probably, you know, have a beer and get along really well. I'm pretty sure Alan and my wife could have a really good teacher rant fest together. <laughs> I, give them I feel like I'm hearing the same thing. Right I give now. them assessments that test what they know that, that rather than something that they can just freaking like, you know, pass while they're sleeping. It's like, put your handprint here. 100. No, like you have to freaking know. It. And so it takes me forever to grade and I don't sit at my desk during class and grade. I teach, teach. Hey, Alan, how do you feel about state testing? Oh, that's oh, the my. truth for all teachers. So part of the issue is part of the issues is I have, I have like upper level kids who help me. I better me. get some more to drink here. Um, <laughs> during the fourth quarter, like the schools basically tell you like, you you probably shouldn't really, you, they do it without doing it. That say that you shouldn't teach during fourth quarter because there's so much testing, the, like not just state testing, but AP testing. So I have kids who are like, out all the time even my really good kids like they're out all the time and they come back and so their grades are awful because they're over tested like especially my really upper level kids they're in like five ap classes so their their brains are mush um and so even their grades are falling um and like one like one of my students who is you know fantastic got to be on a on a freaking test and she's like that's not real like that's not real i'm like it's an 87 she's like that's not real i'm like okay <laughs> fine, we're sharing this delusion then, but that's what's going in the grade book. And so it just occupies too much time. It takes too much time away from instruction. It takes too long because they don't just stick everybody in the cafeteria with a paper test, which is what they did when I was in school. So it got done in two days. Um, and it doesn't actually measure anything. Um, it measures, it measures, it measures nothing. And if they fail, they're going to push them through anyway, because graduation rate nationally is tied or fund federal funding is tied to graduation rate. So there's literally no incentive to hold a kid back. I have kids who graduated two weeks ago who cannot read or who read at like a third grade level. And we're doing them a favor because we're, we're like, we're not doing them any favors by not holding them back. They have no skills. Like, I mean, they can sell drugs. Like, I mean, good for you. Like what a career, but like these kids, like we're not preparing them at all. And we pretend like we hold them accountable but we don't like we don't hold them accountable at all. And when we try, we're overridden by like teaching is the most bizarre profession. I have never had a job where the people who hired me to do that job do more to keep me from doing the job I was hired to do than teaching. And it's so bizarre. Like you hired me to teach. Why do you keep getting in my way of doing that? Can I just teach, please? So, I mean we're not helping these kids and yeah, state testing. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's pointless because they're not learning anything. The children don't know anything. Even the smart ones don't know anything and letting a kid through high school without knowing how to read. That is not helping him. We're setting him up for failure, but you know, got to get that, got to get that funding, which doesn't go to teacher salaries. So <laughs> Yeah, standardized tests ha are not predictive at all of someone's ability to succeed in college. Not, not even a little bit. Not even kind of. And I think about like the the stress. Like my kid, fourth grade, and he's stressed out about this star testing. That's and ridiculous. Like, what? That's crazy. You're, you're you're freaking nine years old. Why are you stressing about this? You know, but yeah. he's just a perfectionist. You know, so he's just kind of like that. So he's like taking it way more seriously than I think he needs. It's third to. grade here. It's third grade instead of fourth. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, uh, well, I take a pack. I feel like Alan and my wife could probably kill about like a 24 pack. Disgusting. This is ridiculous. Yeah. I feel like standardized tests are, are bureaucrats answers to how to do education. Uh, and they're, it's the worst thing. They're, they're an abomination in fact. Um, so 
Yeah. It's okay. So it, the standardized testing is the answer to, well, there are too many bad teachers. How do we, how do we grade teachers? Well, grading, grading a teacher on how well a student does, which you have no control over their freaking home life or whether or not they're going to do any work. I have no control over, over their lives. And when people claim that I'm indoctrinating, like that teachers are indoctrinating their kids, I can't indoctrinate them to do their freaking work. So I don't like, if I could indoctrinate, it wouldn't be about any kind of like political matter. It would be about doing your work. That's what it would be about. And it doesn't work. So I understand there are bad teachers. You can get rid of bad teachers by just hiring a lot of really good ones and paying them really well and making working conditions really good. And as a culture, elevating teachers to the level of like, I say this all the time on my streams and I say it in my class. I, the teacher who's supposed to teach them stuff, I tell them things. I'm like, guys, what you are worried about is not a big deal. Like mm. this thing does not have a huge effect on your career. You'll be fine. But they don't listen to me because I'm a teacher. If I made 300 grand a year, then they would listen. Because if I knew so much, like if you know so much, Walker, why are you teaching? Like if you, oh, if you have it all figured out, why on earth are you a teacher? That's the problem. Like, if you if the culture didn't despise teachers like and even people in this chat are be like no i love teachers but do you like do you like as a culture we hate them like we hate them and i don't really know why but we do and if it wasn't like that and we esteemed them then you would have your pick of the litter instead of literally taking anyone who rolls off the street and needs a job who sits in the room who doesn't know doesn't know anything the kids know more than them about the subject in the room because we need someone to sit in there. That's what you get when no one respects teachers and no one wants to do the job. You get a bunch of people who don't want, like you have to take the, the, the dregs, you know? If it wasn't like that, you could get rid of bad teachers. You could just be like, okay, well, we have like, there's a whole huge demand for really quality teachers. You aren't doing your job because the thing is, Having this evaluation system where you tell the teacher that you're going to come to their room and observe them, okay, that person's not going to sit there and watch a video with their kids that day, but they're going to do it every other day. And even if you see them doing that, you can't fire them. There's no one to replace them with. Ask the kids. Philip, Philip, part of Philip's eval is student evaluation. Now, while students can, you know, students can just be pissants and mark you bad because they're, you know, mean. That's pretty rare, actually. I know. The students, my students are honest. They will tell you which teachers are teaching and which ones, like, I hate that person. They're a good teacher, but I hate them. More often, it's like, I like them as a person. They're bad at teaching. You know, students will tell you. So put some weight on that, but, you know, they're not going to. Anyway, that's end of rant. It's very frustrating. Uh, I think when I had a lot of things I was ignorant about. And then you talk about like people saying, Oh, they love teachers, but do you, and there's a lot of things that I admit that I was, I was ignorant about, about the education system until I married a teacher and saw a lot of these things firsthand and realized this isn't just her griping about her day at work. It's like, it's a lot of things. I'm like, I think a little bit of a uh, reform might be needed here, you know, but you, it's, yeah. you know. I mean, it does. And the thing is like, I also don't like being lied to. I don't like people. I don't like people saying stuff to me that I know is blatantly untrue. So when on teacher appreciation week, I have, you know, it's people from the community, like, you know, business owners and school board members telling me how much they appreciate teachers. When I know for a fact that two thirds of the school board voted against as private citizens voted against the measure to, to give teachers raises. I'm like, no, you don't like, no, you don't appreciate me. You don't, you care about yourself and you appreciate teachers as long as it doesn't affect you anyway. Like if you don't have to do anything, then you're fine. Like, but you're not going to do anything that's going to inconvenience you in the slightest way to make teachers lives better. So don't sit there and tell me you appreciate me. You freaking don't like you voted against teacher raises. And I, I hate that. Like, I hate, I don't want to get another email from the superintendent telling me what a freaking hero I am. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Like, I'm not a freaking hero. I don't want your, I don't want your plaudits. I don't. I want to be respected and paid what I am due. Well, you don't do it for the money. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I do it so that I can feed my family and afford my freaking rent. That is why I do it. Like, I wouldn't do it if you didn't pay me, you fools. Ridiculous. I appreciate you, Alan. 
And I appreciate your passion for real. I, I, I will yeah. run to a lot of my uh, students, but I'm not going to do the amount of work that my job requires for free. I'm just not like, mm -hmm. and uh, anyway, I do love my students like a lot, but I don't like being held hostage with toxic positivity because I love my students. Well, you got to take those graduation day speeches with a mass massive grain of salt, you know? graduation day speeches are all the same. Can you believe it's been four years? And then I always have kids like Mr. Walker, I'm gonna shout you out of graduation. And then when it's time for the speech, like Mr. Walker, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't fit the shout out. And I'm like, of course you couldn't. <laughs> That's fine. But I have two kids, like my two superstars who are both going to be giving speeches at graduation next year, who have promised that I will get my due shout out. And if they betray me, I'll just commit ritual seppuku, like right there on camera. <laughs> No, <laughs> I actually was not referring to the students, though. I meant the administrators. Oh, yeah, the administration one where it's like, uh, we're so proud of all the teachers here. Let's give them a round of applause. I don't want your round of applause unless it comes with money or, <laughs> you know, like or or let me do my job. Like, let yeah. me hold killed kids accountable. If you just do that, then I don't have to do my job three, four, five different times. So I don't I'm not doing quite as much work. You know, like one of the two, either let me trust me that I know what I'm doing as a teacher and that I'm not failing any kid who deserves to pass. I promise you I'm not. Um, anyway. So, Sarah, is the other non-teacher on this call? I mean, uh, how's work? Everything going OK? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah my, my job is good. It is. I mean, it's tough. I'd like who said it, Jake? that I, everybody does their job for the money. Like you, you work is work. I really like my job. I feel very fortunate that I do because a lot of people struggle and it's, and it's really tough for, for a lot of people, but it, it how, is. How many teachers are you helping out there, Sarah? The end of the day, <laughs> I do see a fair few teachers. I, uh, I have a large pediatric practice. So I see lots of students uh, but I do see adults as well, but it's tough and it's it's tough for everyone. There's a lot of emphasis and in, in certain professions like professions in, in medicine, for sure, you're expected to treat it as if it is not a job, as if it is a calling or a passion or or anything else. And I do think that it's appropriate to be grateful that you have a job like I'm very grateful to have the job that I am I understand that it is very well paying it is you know there is a certain level of respect that is given to you whether it's deserved or not but it is you know a stressful job that you sometimes need to take a break from too so it is it's it's hard in the opposite way and that people think that you should always like you, this should be the only thing that you care about at all times. And in medicine, there's this really big push for academia. And I have a lot of interests. I have a lot of things that I like. I like reading. I like doing stuff on booktube, being with my kids, all these different things. And I think that in medicine, because it attracts a certain personality type that I definitely do fit, people expect you to want to pour every moment of your life into it. So you, it's not enough to just be a clinical psychiatrist. You have to also need an administrative position or you need to be on this board and this volunteer thing and you need to be publishing these papers and you need to do this volunteer work. And if you don't do all that, it is like doing your just your job is not enough. Like you need to be doing those other things. It's an expectation just because of the position that you're in. So that can be hard sometimes, but it's hard in a different way. Well, I'm still just in boring, you know, major corporate America accounting. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> nothing really exciting to talk about there. I do think it's kind of ironic though, that, uh, you know, I do work for one of the, uh, the global giants when it comes to oil and gas. And they've been talking about if gas per gallon here in Texas gets over $5 a gallon, they're going to let us work from home. I'm like, that's so ironic when I work for an oil and gas company. So, but, yeah. Huh. At least, you know, at least they're aware of the situation. And that, that's great because I don't know about you guys, but right when I bought a V8 uh, and, you Oops. know, that car chugs the gasoline like I chug a bottle of water. Uh, it's right when gas prices went up. So, you know, well, at least uh, at least we've all had a lot of practice working from home. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one thing that uh, when I went there, they said, you know, because really like right when I graduated business school was right when the virus should not be named hit and 
they were laying everybody off. You know, there was no, you know, real robust job market. But once I went back or whatever, that one thing that really drew me to the company is they said they didn't let anyone go during that. They let everyone work from home. You know, they gave us the think pads and stuff and they're still set up like that if something happens again. So that was something that maybe, you know, drew me to that. But someone did bring it up. We have like a suggestion box. And I think a lot of people were putting it in there that, you know, a lot of us are daily commuters, you know, and uh, is there a point where you guys will, because they let us work from home two days a week. They want three in the office, two at home. And say, is there going to be the option for more opportunities to work from home? Because, yeah, I'm like breaking even just to drive to the office, you know, so at least they're aware of it. So that's feels like as far as corporate jobs go, at least they're aware of stuff like that. So it feels like a decent company in that regard. So, yeah, I'm happy with it. It's just like it's just it's just so backwards. Like we all we want is for these. I got I got a freaking I came I went to school the day after that the kids were gone. And my buddy, uh, the engineering teacher, who's right next door to me, uh, was getting brand new computers. His entire room, brand new computers. I am on the same computer I've had since for 10 years, since I started teaching. Ooh. It takes 20 minutes from startup, from when I press that power button to when I can open PowerPoint. I have to sit there for 20 minutes. Oh and the reason he gets new computers is because he teaches engineering and federal funding, CTE funding. He has like for his class, his class gets like 30 grand a year to spend on his engineering class. I I get zero dollars. I have to make the JCL, the Latin club kids, we raise money. And then I spend stuff for the club from the money we raise. And then mostly I just buy it from my own paycheck. So we, we do not value children knowing anything. We want them to every single senior. I went to the collegiate studies. So collegiate studies is our fake program like IB or whatever. It's just like kids that are going to college, whatever. And the seniors at this banquet every year, they go up and they announce where they're going. So we have 300 seniors. They announce, well, they're not all collegiate studies, whatever. They announce where they're going and what they're going to major in. There was not one single humanities major, not one out of every single one of these children, not one of them is majoring in the humanities. And you know, why? Like, why, why would they? We've told them that that's useless. We have told them that like, learning crap, knowing about the world, looking back at where we came from, like that is, that is pointless. You need to learn how to use a computer or, you know, build something. And there's nothing wrong with STEM. STEM is obviously extremely important. I'm not ragging on STEM careers, but the fact that we think that that's the only thing that is important, we, like we're, people need to be well-rounded. People need to know things. They need to know how to think. They need to know, like, they need to understand the world around them and not just be able to perform a function. Like, they're not, we're not functions. We are members of society. We live in a society. Like, it's just yeah. so infuriating. And this is why I have two girls right now who are going into their senior year who are both going to major in classics in college. And it makes me weep thinking about it because... It's because because of my class and I love them and I'm so glad this isn't on my channel because they watch my stuff and I don't ever want them to hear me say that. But <laughs> I love these kids like they're majoring the freaking classics. And so at least I'll have two that are going to major in um, the humanities. It's just so frustrating. It, so so we tell them it doesn't matter. We my school has signings. We're like, oh, look, this person is going to this college to play this sport. Meanwhile, this girl is going to an Ivy League college with $300,000 in scholarship. Why aren't we missing school to go watch her sign anything? Is that not a big deal? Is, is it not? Because these people who play football at our school, our football team's terrible. Why on earth are we celebrating these people? They're bad at, they're bad at this. And because <laughs> we treat our student athletes like that, they're douchebags. Like the student, they're douchebags because we act like they are above everything, that what they do is more important than anything. So they're douchebags. Not all, of course, not all, but many of them are just wretched human beings, but we give them great man syndrome. Look, all this is, I'm just demagoguing. 
it is what it is. Shut hey, up, I Ron. live in Texas where fo- high school football is like king. So I, uh, you, you know what I know what you're talking about. Like it's just it's it's, and I'm not and I'm not I'm not trying to get down on the athletes. Like good, I don't I'm not having a problem with celebrating what people are good at. I have a problem that we pick and choose what we celebrate. Like these ki- teenagers already have difficulty with self worth. When we tell these kids that they are worthless because they are not good at math and science and because they can't throw and catch a ball, it's not fair it's not fair it isn't fair these kids are just as valuable these are the kids who have the ideas that shaped the world they are the ones that shaped the the roman constitution there which is where all of the constitution lovers in this country guess where we got our constitution from guys adams and jefferson they read cicero they read cicero and they read plato and they read aristotle like where do you think this crap came from? That it came, they pulled it whole cloth from the ether? Freaking no. They read De Res Publica and Plato's Republic. Sorry, I'm yelling. So, Alan, you know that uh, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. And the, the, the big thing, the big take I'm getting here is we need an educated populace for a healthy democracy. Yes. To we really need that. Plus, my other thing from all this is I think we should form a booktube football team. <laughs> You're the jock. What am I going to do? We might get, yeah, yeah. We might get uh, dominated. Quite Mike, did you play sports in, in school? I played baseball, yeah. Which my is brother, is brother, fine brother. in Texas, but it, it, it's it's always going to be nothing compared to football. But yeah. yeah. My brother was a baseball player. Uh, Sal, my wife teaches uh, English as a second language. She's completely fluent in Spanish, which is gold. When you're, you know, this close to the Mexican Texan border, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, she also is teaching a, what, a social studies class and a Mexican American studies class this year. So she had three preps. So you teachers know what that means. That uh, there have been, I, I joked on Alan's stream the other night about how I've done my time helping grade papers. I've done my time helping prepare some things for her classes as well. So I almost feel like this is like a third job for me is is, is, help, is being like a teacher assistant sometimes. But you know. Yeah, and and someone up there on on in the comments, Mike said that um, there is too much focus on going to college and not enough on trade school. Trade school. Everyone doesn't need to go to college. I understand that. Right. But college should be a place where you want to learn a bunch of stuff. If you don't want to like do that and you want to work, you absolutely should be encouraged to do that. It's not for everyone, and we should celebrate the people who want to do that also. But we don't. We think everyone needs to go to college to get a four-year degree where it's not for everyone. I should not have gone to university my first year out of high school. I wasn't ready, and I didn't know what I wanted to do, which is why I ended up back here going to a state school, like going to a community college my second year, which is where I needed to be to start with. Yeah. Just like we tell these kids that if they don't have all A's, if they get one B, they are never going to get into a good college. They're going to die with a heroin needle in a ditch in their arm because that's the only alternative. If you get one B, you are not going to college. You're going to die from an overdose. That's the only that's the only possible outcome. And I try to say, I'm like, guys, that's not true. It's and they're like, no, it is. I'm not going to get into a good college. What is what are you talking about? What, like, what are you talking about? No, I have, like, okay. I'm old enough to remember when they told us that if you didn't write in cursive when you got to college, that they would just give you a zero and everything. And <laughs> I went back to school later in life and I did something in cursive and like, yeah, could you just print from now on? <laughs> so <laughs> I was lied to all through high school, you know. So. I'm surprised you wrote anything by hand at all. I, everything's on a, on a keyboard. Uh, there was days. a lot of, a lot of scanning and things like that. Did you be surprised? It wasn't all, I mean, I did do all my stuff online, which is what enabled me to do that and be a stay at home dad while I was doing that. But, uh, okay. I'm surprised how much they, they do still do to, uh, want you to do a lot of stuff by hand. It's actually really because my students freak out when I ask them to write by hand. They're just like, why? I haven't done that since like second grade. So yeah. <laughs> right. Right. I had chemistry professors that used to make you write in pen because they thought if you wrote in pen, you would have to reflect on what you were writing and you were, you'd be less likely to make a mistake. So all of our chemistry tests had to be completed in pen. And he was a really weird professor. He also, after the first test would staple add drop forms to the tests <laughs> people that he didn't feel That's like true. should continue with the course. In, um, in high school, my best friend, 
he wrote, he's the only one that wrote with a pen. The rest of us, you know, mechanical pencils or whatever. We're like, Finn, why do you freaking write? Like, why do you write with a pen? He's like, I, I like it. I'm like, but like, what, what if it doesn't have an eraser, Finn? He's like, erasers are for those who make mistakes. Ah. <laughs> now it's like, Finn, like, this is why everyone hates you because you act like that. That's why everyone hates you. That's why I hate you right now. Are we talking about like trade school? It's like, I've already told my kids, and I'm like, they're going to be in fifth grade and second grade next year. And I've already told them. Unless you get a scholarship, you're going to community college for those first two years because, like, I'm not paying university prices for you to get your core prerequisites, you know? So I was like, go to community college for two years, show me you're serious about education, and learn what it is that you want to do because who knew what they wanted to do when they were 18? Besides, like, my wife, who knew from the time she was five that she wanted to be a teacher, who knew what they wanted to do at 17, 18 years old? You know? I, mean, I know I didn't. Yeah, the trashing of community college like is another part of this great delusion we've sold these children on higher yeah. education. I had I, like I went to a four-year university my first year, and I do not remember a single teacher from there. I my my community college, I had two really really good professors there. I went to like five different colleges, and I had good professors and bad professors at all of them. There is parity across education. First of all, first of all, Philip Chase doesn't teach at the university. So let's go ahead and look at Dr. Philip Chase teaches at a state college or community college. So community college, yeah. 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 That's, that's exhibit A, but like there's parity across education. Like people think that if you're, if you're going to this school, oh, it doesn't have as good a professors at this. Explain to me how Western Civ is different here than here. In fact, this one's more likely to have someone who's been entrenched for 60 years and like doesn't even know how to like, you know, is does not know how to relate to the current generation. Like, but you cannot, you cannot break through the delusion. You can't, you cannot make them understand. You can't. Yeah. Because I wish you were more open with students about community college. It's like, I, look, guys, it's the same course and it's all transferable and it's 10 percent of the cost of a university for to learn your electives, to learn, you know, lit 101. And she, I mean, it's just it's ridiculous that people pay major university costs for those courses. So, right. yeah, it's completely 100 percent transferable. You only got to go to a major university for two years, you know, so. Yeah, I went to not only do I teach at a community college, I went to a community college for my first two years and then transferred to a four year school. We have people in the chat wondering what a community college is, people abroad. So it's similar to university, but it, they confer two year degrees normally, two or three year degrees, depending on the degree. Some of those degrees are terminal in the sense that you you graduate, you go out, you get a job or like nursing and uh, just a wide array of different things, but then, or a dental hygienist, or, you know, there are just certain degrees that you would get a job right after you're done. Community colleges also take care of what Mike was talking about, the core stuff, the first two years of university, essentially. Stuff that everybody's got to take, regardless of your major. Yep. Regardless of your major. So everybody in the United States does, you know, composition, learning how to write. There's a certain courses that are pretty uniform across the board. The first yeah, couple take of your years. math, of course. Be before, yep. Be before you go to, you get your bachelor's where you have a major, where you're focusing on your major. So community college is a lot cheaper as well because it is funded in part by the state and by the county that you live in. Uh, so uh, it's a cheaper option. Uh, and there's a lot of, there's traditionally, I guess, a lot of people look down on it as being cheaper. And, uh, but the fact is the, the professors who work at community colleges are, are teachers first. When you go to a big university, the professors there are more often researchers first and teaching is kind of not their main thing. So you might actually, not uni universally, but you might actually get people who are more passionate about teaching if you go to a community college. So publish your parish, Philip. Yeah, we don't have to at a community college, you don't have to publish academic writing in order to keep your job, which is the case for people who work at the, the four year schools. So they're pressured to do that. Yeah. That guys in a community or a state school, you can get awesome teachers like Philip who will teach you about Beowulf and the Hobbit, you know? Yeah. So there's that. <laughs> All of my students are now, I've told them, I'm like, y'all, y'all go back in time. Y'all are equipped to lead an ancient Greek army. You know all about battle tactics. You know what works, what doesn't. Every one of you can be the new Alexander the Great. Seriously. They know how to lead a phalanx. So what you guys reading after you read? 
what you're reading now. Does anybody is anybody like me that you've got like your next like six months planned out in advance? No, anybody at all? Not six months, but uh, maybe a month or two. Yeah, we've been reading the only Joe Abercrombie I haven't read before. So, oh, I got to try that someday. Have you you haven't started it yet, Mike? Have you? No, I'm starting on the first because there's some other people that want to do it. And I I got to finish this weirdo book first. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will be curious to hear your Abercrombie thoughts on the half of whatever it's called what's this what's the trilogy called um it's called the shattered sea shattered sea yeah. half a king half a war half the world and i can't tell you what order they go in because they're all so similar okay so cool that... yeah i haven't read it yet either though i love everything first law as you know so, so about next what are you doing after you just finished wolves of kala so what 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 yep. ethelmont book are you doing next or or He's yeah, done. so I'm I'm reading Jenny Wirtz uh, to write Hell's Chasm right now, and after that, I probably depending on when uh, AP is good again because he's been having these migraines and he's been having a real tough time. He hasn't been able to read, but once we have our Dust of Dreams chat, I will read the final book in the Malazan Book of the Fallen, The Crippled God, and then I will read Esselmont's final book in Novels of the Malazan. And then Empire, you're done. A sale, and then I'm done. I'm done with the Malazan stuff oh. entirely. I've read everything Malazan after that. So, yeah. And then I've got some Mark Lawrence I want to read, Book of the Ancestor. Have you uh, done the Janny Ward stuff that she did with Feist for uh, Rift War? Have you read that? Jar of the Empire. Uh, no, I, I I actually do intend People to read doing that. doing that on my Discord right now. It sounded really interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I did read uh, Magician by Feist, but I didn't read any further in that series. So... I'm a little like, should I read more Feist first or, or just go straight into Daughter of the Empire? But I, it's a I'll question for you out. there, Alan. I mean, it's not that I'm avoiding First Law. Act. It's not 500 pages. They're, they're know, under that. I'm not actively avoiding First Law. I just the like I just have other things that I'm reading. People put mm -hmm. someone puts um puts the blade itself on my patron meal every month also. So it's always there. There's always a possibility there as well. It's been um, that I am just trying to finish series that I have started that I want to finish. I that, man. Um, oh, yeah. And so it's the only things that I'm starting are things that I've committed to like read with people or like a channel read along, which is, you know, what we're doing now. Um, but other than that, so, I mean, I will read first law, um, especially since everyone's not talking about first law right now. I mean, everyone, it's just something that everyone likes. Um, what I don't want to read right now is, um, I don't know. Something everybody's talking about. Who knows? Oh, trust me. I get every day. How come you not reading this? How come? Why have you not read this yet? I'm like, man, I wish I could just quit my job and read full time. Trust me. I do wish I could do that. But, you know, I don't audio. So I read everything with my eyes and that takes a little longer. So, yeah, I can only do, you know, four to six books per month, especially like, for, you know, doorstopper size, like most of the stuff we read is. Yeah, I'm a slow reader. And again, like I always there's not a single day that I don't have work to do. So I have to elect not to work ahead to read. And then I also like spending time with my wife, but you know, like if I, if I want to, I can't read. So sometimes we sit and read together, which is nice. Um, but I can't look, Ben, I can't pressure anyone. My word, my word doesn't mean oh, anything. I'm going to read it. I'm reading it this summer. If, essentially I need Philip to read it and then Philip to tell other people to read it. And then all Alan pressured me. Yeah, I know. I'm, I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> no, once Philip likes it, then people will read it all of a sudden. I've been telling people to read long price quartet, like since the day I was born and all of a sudden Philip reads it. Now it was like, I'm going to check out the long price quartet. I'm like, I know. <laughs> and I told you, I Philip. have the same thing. You think, Oh, you got this big platform and everybody just listens to you. Yeah. But you're not, maybe Philip. not on my discord. They don't. Cause I'll tell people all the time, you check this out. They won't read it. And then they'll get like a group read along like from someone a year later and everybody reads it. And I'm just With like, Philip. It's Philip. Philip, you gotta is, get, Philip is infiltrating and stealing our citizens. You get like those fake masks that you can put like on a stick. Get one of those of like of like Philip's like jaw and a smile and just put it over your face. And you say, hey, you should read, you should read more Daniel Abraham or maybe more people would do it. Yeah, well, I have been saying that actually. I've been praising LPQ. I know. And now everybody's like, I want to read it. It's like. Now see, Jake says you're full of it. I mean, that is true. I did that. Uh, Sebastian J. Castell messaged me and told me that like all their stuff sold out on Amazon when I started doing great coats. Now, yeah. books three and four didn't sell out, but you know, books one and two did. <laughs> I love him. He's so nice. He is really nice. Yeah. I love me and me and Al are we wear simpatico when it comes to great coats. I liked it a yeah, lot. 100%. Mm -hmm. um, new, new one should be coming out end of this year. 
Yeah, Scott, but no one did it until you started a read along for it. And that wasn't because of me. I told people a year ago, I'm starting my reread of the Dark Tower. You guys should join me. And everyone's like, oh, I don't really know. But then Scott says, hey, we're going to start a read along. I was like, oh, I want to read it. Yeah, say so. Don't give me that. Don't give me that. I think, I, like, I'm going to amend my statement. I think a lot of people um, who don't have channels do do listen to me and read stuff. But, the, but because they don't have channels, it isn't loud. I think that I think that's what the thing is. Because, because Jake's right. A lot of people did by shadow and summer but a bunch of them didn't have channels at the time if they so you're do saying now, they don't they don't have to publicly admit that they listen to you correct so they're safe with their opinions because the public won't ridicule them for it yes no, <laughs> sarah how is your influence do you get a ton of people to read whatever you're reading there was a time sarah used to listen to me and now she she doesn't listen to me at all and well, yeah, she has I, a channel. I like sarah's like uh you know her tbr for the month and i'm like i haven't heard of half of these but you know it, they, they sound awesome i like that you keep it fresh that way you're not reading the same three things that every other booktuber is reading i love that um i think the, sorry, like green sorry, the, the what uh she just said you're reading stuff that every other booktuber is reading and i said the words green bone uh, I, I, always. I by uh jade legacy so i notoriously was very lukewarm on jade city and jade war it seemed like everybody was loving them and i read them I'm because everybody was loving them and i didn't dislike them but i had a really hard time connecting to the characters and i think it was just that fonda lee's writing style did not jive with me very well so i have a i'm really picky when it comes to characters narrating their own internal monologue and like justifying why they're doing the things that they're doing. So like, they're like, I'm not going to do this because then this bad thing would happen. And like, people don't think like that. Maybe some people think like that. I don't know. My, like, I just do things like it, 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 there's not a whole lot of like step-by-step -step processes that are going like we think too fast for that to actually happen. And it bothered me in the green bone saga. It was actually Jake who kept like convincing me to read it and I did and I I really did love Jade Legacy I it surprised me how much I enjoyed it it made me want to go back and reread the other two books to see if I was just like crabby or if Jade Legacy is really that much better than the other two or, or I have something similar I, I always tell myself like I won't let anyone's expectations decide how I feel for a book but if it is like universally over the top praise, I will go into it expecting something amazing. And when it's not, I'm like, am I reading the same book as am I reading the same book as everyone else? You know, I go, so. I go into it wanting to hate it. I go into it like I'm going to. No, I try not to go anything with my arms <laughs> crossed unless it's a Malazan book, because I know that that will get people flipping tables like uh, like Sean here says, uh, you know, he doesn't know how he feels about me making him read Malazan. But <laughs> I, I'm kidding, guys. I, and I don't, I don't in, in case it's not clear, I'm being hyperbolic with the fact that i'm saying that people don't listen to me i'm right. i'm definitely being hyperbolic same i know people do listen it's just there's, there's certain things where i'm on my discord i talk about like i'll be like this book's so great you guys gotta read it and i was like oh, i don't really have the time right now but then like a, a handful of other people be like oh i just read it it's amazing and then they're like oh okay well i'm gonna break my tbr to read it right now i'm like what the it's hell? yeah it's it's, <laughs> most, it's mostly jimmy being like i don't do read-alongs and because i can't commit to reading one book a month of a series and then by the way, I'll be reading one book for the next 11 months with Philip Chase. It's really, it's really that that's stuck in my craw. I'm like, Jimmy, et tu, Jimmy? So it's not, it's, it's, it's Jimmy. Oh, we haven't heard yet what Sarah's going to be reading. Sarah? Uh, I'm assuming that I'm going to want to dive right into Ship of Destiny after Mad Ship. Nice, yeah. But next month, I do have a lot of weird books on the TBR just because I have a lot of physical books that I want to get through. So I think there's going to be a fair amount of non-fantasy stuff next month. I am reading the Daughter of the Forest books, the Seven Water series with Evie. So I need to read the second book because we're supposed to discuss that soon. And obviously, the New Jedi Order is going to come in. So we're going to read that. You can read those new Jedi Order books in a couple of days. They're yeah. just, they're candy. They're so good. Quick. Except the first one. The first one will make you cry. But other than that, they're just candy. Yeah. It's but, I mean, the sad bad thing about being with Andrew for so long is that I I know a lot of the stuff that happens in the EU, so I know the sad thing that happens oh, okay. in uh, in this series. Yeah. See, I read that first, but Vector Prime in real time, and I think that that really is what scarred me to not want to read Ray Salvatore for the longest mm -hmm. time because it's like no. His first Star Wars book, he kills off a legacy character, and I cry. And I completely was not ready for it, you know. So, <laughs> in hindsight, it was brilliant. It was brilliant that he had the balls to do that. And I think that obviously that was probably a 
not his decision. They just said, Hey, here's what we're going to do. You got to figure out how to do it. But I, I do think subconsciously. So I'm like, no, I'm not reading R.A. Salvatore. He, he hurt <laughs> me one time, you know, but, I, but I, I did really enjoy Driss though. So I can't wait to continue with that. Now, did you read hunger of the gods yet? Me? I yeah. haven't. No. no, Sarah, Sarah. No, if, if, if you guys decide that you're going to chat about it, then I'll just read it. I'll, I'll take a couple of days. Sometimes that's what it takes. Like I have so many things that I want to read. I'm not good at sticking to a schedule that someone has to be like, the, the talk is scheduled for this day. And I'll be like, okay, well, I need to start it this many days in advance yeah. in order to Word. get through it. <laughs> yeah, I know, Mike, you read it right before it yeah. even was published, right? If it's got John Gwynn or Joe Abercrombie on the cover, I'm and it feels weird because I'm saying that these books are like a decade old now and I haven't read them yet. But I think that's because at the time I believed all the hype about, oh, it was a YA book. And it wasn't yeah. really until I talked to him about that. And he says, you got a female protagonist that's in the teen years. They're always going to market it as a as a young adult fantasy book because it'll sell better. So he said he wouldn't classify it as that. So I think that was, that was my dumbass fault. But, you know, you learn things as, as time goes by. You want to know what I found? <laughs> so we were talking about um, Red Rising a little bit ago. I started reading Red Rising when it came out and it was marketed as YA initially. I think just because it was dystopian and everything dystopian was YA. At they the were top. trying to get that Hunger Games crowd. They were. Yeah, they were trying to bring it in. But I went to the library the other day with the kids and we were in the kids section and they had Dark Age like in the YA. I was like, of all of the books in that series, the one that you should not have shelved here is Dark Age. I took a picture actually and sent it on Discord. I was like, that's insane. Can thought what shouldn't be on this shelf? That that series i'm like i think that that might it didn't start that way it kind of slowly slid into it i said i feel like that is the sci-fi equivalent to first law at least where the series is now because i said i feel like joe abercrombie ghost wrote that fifth book because it is just so damn bleak and never in a nihilism way he really finds that that fine line of you know you got this weird weird humor because like severo is very much like a joe abercrombie character that like, you could see him writing that character this is stuff that he says it kind of gets that wicked humor that joe has but then you know you've got you know dead babies and shit you know and people getting like impaled through their asses so it's it, it's just it's so brutal and i was like how can anybody call that series ya it's got some of the darkest stuff i've ever read in it so but, you know it could be like philip says you know malazan's not not grim dark because someone pets a dog at the end you know so <laughs> <laughs> So you know that that goes falls right back into that category. What is what is grim dark? You know, but oh yeah, but guys, all of this all of this Robin Hobb talk is like making me want to break my schedule. So y'all gotta stop this. You should. Then we'll do it more because you should. Yeah. yeah. So my my ultimate goal is twofold: to get you to break your schedule for Robin Hobb, and to get you to watch any anime. And like, it doesn't matter which one. It can be a short one. It can be you know a very adult one. Just just one. Did I tell you my kid watched Attack on Titan without me you even knowing about it? <laughs> you did. So we, were at the, we were at the bookstore and I was showing, I was looking at the manga section. And he was like, Oh, Attack on Titan. I watched all this. I'm like, when did you watch that? He's like, On Netflix. I'm like, How did you watch it? He's like, Oh, I used your account. Yeah. So that's why I wasn't worried about letting my kid watch Evil Dead this weekend. You know, it's like he's seen everything at this point. You know, smart so. kid, smart kid. Some some dark some dark points in that series. So sure. I, I, from what he tells me, he says he thinks I'd like Attack on Titan a lot. So if you're going to if you're going to submit to Sarah's demands, watch the first season of Promise Neverland. It is twelve episodes and it is perfectly paced. It is thrilling. It is edge of your seat. Oh my gosh, what is going to happen? And at the end of twelve episodes, you can walk away forever and realize that you saw something amazing it's 12 episodes at 20 promise minutes apiece. yeah it's called the promise neverland season two is they went they went a wall from the manga and it's terrible and it has uh -huh. none of the it is not perfectly paced it is not even interesting so i i don't like i could live without ever having seen it but the first season is one of the tightest like tightest paced uh things to where nothing is wasted nothing is wasted and it's over i'd like to watch too. vinland saga but i think i want to read it first yeah so, but vinland saga the animation looks really awesome and you know me i love me some love me some vikings you know so sure vinland saga is good mm. what was that face alan you don't like vinland saga I haven't seen it. I was looking over here to some. Oh, not, I think, they, they think he's working. I would be making that face too if I was working this late on a Saturday. Yeah, so. 
Stupid. I have never heard of that. Uh, Helsing is one. I've got those books too. I don't know. It, when it comes to anime, I've told you my, my problems with it is just is I don't like when you get like the big goofy expressions and stuff like that and the over the top like ha, 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 laughs and stuff. It just it just it drives me crazy. That's not in Promise Neverland. Promise so Neverland. yeah, yeah. I obviously know that there are ones that are way more serious than that. So yeah, sure. I had people that tried to push the wrong things on me early, and I think it kind of like poisoned me against it. But uh, I would watch that before I'd watch any animated. Thing that DC or Marvel's making right now, which is just garbage. So yeah, mm. that's why I kind of flipped the manga because I'm not pleased with what American comics is doing anymore. So, so you guys can educate me a little bit here. Um, and I don't mean anything by this question, except I honestly want to know. Uh, anime is when it's on a screen and manga is when it's in a book. Are right. there other differences besides the? No, or... manga's, manga's comics and anime is anime. It's comics that aren't American. But it's <laughs> just, is, is it like the same kind of vibe or the same? They're, they're, they're basically the same. So what anime adds is okay. it animates it and gives it voice actors. Um, okay. Is it is based manga. on manga? Is that how it yes. works? Yes. Most of anime is based, is based on a manga. Um, okay. And so it will expand things. If it's really long, they'll add something called filler arcs because they'll catch up to where the manga is. And so they have to add stuff that isn't canon like just crap while the manga gets ahead. Um, but okay. for smaller stuff, they just adapt, um, you know, the whole thing. They do leave some stuff out, but I prefer it because the Japanese voice actors, uh, it does a lot for my experience to watch it. So One Piece, which is what everybody talks about, I watch it. I do not read the manga because I do not okay. enjoy it without the voice actors. And Alan, um, we're supposed to say anime, right? I, I'm not going to do that because <laughs> I, um, I like I am not in Japan and I'm not speaking Japanese. I'm just saying anime. anime. I know. I heard your whole thing about why you say manga instead of manga. So, well, if yeah. like no one says anime, but they say manga, like yeah. either we're going to do both or we're going to do none. And I'm going to do none. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a rare rogue of, of One Piece. And the thing was, is all I said was, People who got me to read Berserk because they thought it was going to be something that I would like. And they were right. Berserk is very good. And uh, they all told me, based off of your likes and the things you said you don't like, I don't think One Piece will be for you. And the fans went berserk on me. They started thumbs downing like every one of my videos and stuff and leaving nasty comments on it. I was like, I didn't even say anything bad about it. I just said I didn't think it was for me. So yeah, someone's uh, someone on Jimmy's stream from last week. I said the same thing. Someone asked if Jimmy would like One Piece, and I told him. I said, I said no, and it's too long. Like I wouldn't suggest anybody starting it. And I said it was really good, and I said why I really liked it. Mm -hmm. And then someone in the comment like i guess ignored what i said and was like oh alan's on something like uh, one piece <laughs> is amazing i'm like i know i said that but like i just said, said one piece yeah. was amazing you yeah. i just i just said that jimmy probably wouldn't like it and because it's freaking a thousand episodes like that's that's you know that's that's too many episodes and i've been watching it for 20 years and it's still too many episodes no, not for me. I think Sarah, you were one of the first people I knew that talked about manga on your on your channel. So I think you did like a. If, well, you did that one like uh, like I just did that video recently. But like, if you like if you love this, try this next. I think you did one like if you like this uh, fantasy series, try this anime. Right? Then you do a video like that. Yeah. I do have a couple. Actually, I just recorded a third one, so I'll put that one up. They're like my favorite ones to record that nobody watches, but it's okay because like the ten people who watch them also really love fantasy books and really love anime. That's so. how I feel about my Stephen King stuff. Yeah, I was like, I'm it's happy. never going to get the views that I wish it did, but it's just it's my favorite author. I'm not going to you know not talk about it. You know, so yeah, I'm there. They're but fine. the Dark Dark Tower does okay, doesn't it, on book two? It did until I got to the sequels. You can tell where everybody tapped out in the series. You know, Wizard and Glass seems to be where people either are all in or they, they give up, you huh. know, because they don't like that 500-page flashback, which I loved. Get out I of get here. why people that's didn't like part. it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's where, the, yeah, that's that's where the, the viewership went. Well, I mean, like my just my why you should read Dark Tower, you know, this astronomical. I was like, oh, great. You know, it's Stephen King, yeah. but it's fantasy, so people will be more into that. But, yeah, it I think the first one, every single one, it gets lower and lower. So. Well, that's true of any series, though, yeah, right? I, so. I mean, if you do a why you should read, that's going to get a ton of views. If you do a review of book seven and or whatever in a series, that's... I don't know about you guys, but, like, my reviews don't get shit for views anymore. It's like everyone wants the, like, you know, this is that or top ten or... 
whatever. It's like, I do just straight reviews anymore. And it is like maybe 5% of my audience watches it. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, they don't want you to talk spoilers because they say they, they won't watch it if they haven't read it. And then when you do non spoiler, they say, well, I'm not going to watch it because I haven't read it yet. And I'm just like, well, there's no fine line there. So I just post videos and I'm good at ignoring it until YouTube in the creator studio is like, Hey, so fewer, fewer, yeah, fewer viewers are watching, watching this. Than you I'm know. like, I yeah. know that when I posted a review of a KJ Parker novella YouTube, I am well aware that no one who, no one's heard of it is going to watch it. I don't care. YouTube shut up. I know. <laughs> I know. Why do you make me feel bad? You bully. I know. <laughs> I said, I'll be having a great day until I get on YouTube studio and it tells me like, yeah, your viewers aren't watching this for longer than like three minutes. Something's wrong. <laughs> <You're just laughs> such a jerk. Go, go hug your such mom. Such a passive aggressive jerk. Yeah. So. Huh. But I still say you build your credibility with reviews. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'll never I stop think. doing them. I'm just I I thinking, I, I think I need to shorten them. I don't think they need to be 20 minutes anymore. I think maybe I need to shorten those a little bit. I would say uh, that, but I know it's not going to happen. I don't have the ability to yeah, talk about anything. I don't else. think that I can. I don't think I can. Like I, I will be going to something and be like, okay, I'm going to do this a little, you know, faster than usual. And it's like 22 minutes every time I'm done recording. It's just like, I don't know. It's like clockwork at this point. There's no, ah, it's weird. It's weird. But sir, does your anime stuff get good views? Because I know that like bigger booktubers than me, they pretty much switch just to manga basically because it's just like click city. No, because like you have to find it, I think. And literally the only videos that I have done are those like, if you like this, you should read this. Um, I don't know that I would ever want to make that transition and challenge that idea to see if, you know, that would happen. But I think... The people who did really well switching over to, to manga had big audiences already. Audience to begin with, and then it just grew from there, which makes sense. And they're covering things that are really big and really popular. And I have been watching anime for a really long time, and I have some unpopular opinions about it. So I don't know that I would I would necessarily draw in that same audience. And I don't think that I would like to. I I like when I find someone who really likes to read and also just likes to watch a little bit of anime on the side. Like the anime community is gigantic yeah. and very passionate. And it, that that passion can be a great thing, but it can also be a very stressful thing, which is not what I am interested in. Like I would still consider myself a very entry level anime fan. Because like the very intense people know the things about anime that I know about books, like the the studios and the people who compose the music and all like the names of all the voice actors and who did this and who was inspired by that. And I just know if I like something when I watch it, like that's really all that I know. Yeah, that's why I'm that's why I'm scared to do my my next Berserk arc review because I did not like the arc very much at all. And I know it's not going to go over well. So <laughs> you said they're they're very, very, very passionate. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But I mean if I wanted to do more stuff like that, yeah, my berserk videos get insane amount of views compared to everything else. So I can understand why some of those other booktubers kind of made that transition because it did probably help them reach an even new level that they didn't, they didn't weren't reaching before. So, but you know, the downside of that is I get every video I make people will no matter, I could talk about this book and the first comment will be do the next berserk review. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, I understand there's people who, who subscribe to me for that reason. And then they realize, but this guy never talks about manga. You know, he just did a couple of things. I did this in de death note and that was it. You know, and that I know was this is a problem, at least for Murphy, because she talks about it pretty openly on her channel where she got this huge influx of followers for the one piece stuff. And then her book videos started to really suffer because of that, because then she had this huge discrepancy in yeah. views, which I guess for the algorithm doesn't work very well. So oh. I know that and created a secondary channel for a lot of her book stuff. But but it's back on the main channel because that didn't work. My uh, problem with these huge booktubers talking about the algorithm is at there is a threshold you reach, which they have reached. It does not matter what you do. You are fine. The algorithm is still pushing you out above anybody else. You mm -hmm. are not one video away from poverty. Like, you're not. You're fine. You're fine. You're making a fine living doing what you're doing. Like, you having a video that gets 25,000 views instead of 80,000 is not the death knell of your channel. And mm -hmm. I don't like people pretending like it is because it's disingenuous. And it bothers me. Like, you are fine. 
I promise you, YouTube is still recommending you. I promise. Mm -hmm. So I just don't like that rhetoric because it makes it make people get a false impression that like, oh no, if I don't keep supporting this, like they won't still be able to do this as a career. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. They're fine. And that's good for them. Just don't pretend like you're one step away from like vanishing from the internet. You're not. You're not. Do the kind of content you want. You have reached a point. No one's going anywhere. Like no one's leaving. Like you're not going to lose subs because you did book stuff. Like you're not. They're going to stay. You know, the people who like anime may not watch it. But they're not going to leave. You're not going to hemorrhage subs. You've reached a point where the machine is self-sustaining. Like there's no, there's not really anyone bigger than you. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. anyway, I like, don't know. I, I mean, they're 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 doing this for their bread and butter, I guess. And then uh, it's kind of a that's a kind of pressure that we don't feel because yeah. we're doing this as a hobby. So, if I did this as a if I did this for a job, yeah, I probably would talk about stuff I have not as much interest to talk about. Yeah, so just something because, I said I don't want to do this full time because I want to keep it fun. I want to keep talking about stuff that I want to talk about, and I never want to be disingenuous. I'm not saying that anyone is. Yeah, I'm not I'm saying, saying I, I get some things where I get this vibe where a lot of people are saying they love something that they don't love just because they know that's what their audience wants to hear. And I do think, sure, give your audience what they want, but that's just not my brand. I'm not going to lie to people. So. Yeah, yeah. I don't even think about it. I just I just make what I want to do. And one, one video away from poverty, though. I like that. That's yeah, <laughs> it's not true. Like, I want people to make what they want to make. It <laughs> makes me sad when it I looks like this a while someone... back. That's where I'd like to get to where I can put out a video of anything and it gets like Daniel could put out a video of his cat and get 50,000 views. My best videos don't get 50,000 views, you know, so I would love to get to that point. I know, just want so. people to make what they want to make. I don't like listening to people be like, oh, well, I can't, I can't. When people say I can't make this content because algorithm, mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, you can like fight the system. Screw the algorithm. You're going to be fine. Make the video you want to make. That's what people want to see. Like make the video you want to make. Yes, Maybe. there is an element of the pressure dropping off when you know that it's never going to be something that you transition over to. And I don't know about anybody like i'm sure there are lots of people who would love to have it become a career that is not even an option for me like andrew is a stay-at-home dad i am the only person who works in this house like mm. youtube would have to i would have to make it really big before i was going to switch over from the job that i have to being a full-time youtuber so i it yeah. takes all the pressure off like if i want to record an anime video that 20 people are going to watch that's great because i know that those 20 people are really going to like it and then we can talk yeah. about it yeah yeah. Oh, see, Alan, there you go. You should make a, a 30 minute video with Claudius and Spurgeon. I don't want to do that, though. Like, <laughs> I don't want to video my cats for 30 minutes. They drive me crazy. Like most of the time, they'll just be sitting there. Or better yeah. yet, a 30 minute video of Claudius and Spurgeon dry, driving you crazy. That would be perfect. <laughs> Christina, don't laugh. That's that. six figure views right there for sure. <laughs> I think what I'll do is I will kind of listen to the data. Like if I'm doing a series and it's going down and down and down and more, you know, that's why I don't really do sequels usually on the channel. Cause if someone hasn't read the first one, they have no interest in the second one. So I, I don't think it's as much of uh, I, I'm not doing something because you know, it's not going to get views. I'm just like, I'm not going to put it. Cause I, I have this problem of being a perfectionist. I'm not going to put out something unless I put like too much work into it. Cause that's just what I do. It's a cute cat. looks kind of like a church from pet cemetery. Huh? Sweet dreams. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I, I will definitely be like, um, I, if it, I don't feel like, you know, anyone's going to watch it, I, I probably won't put the effort to it. But that's just because I have more ideas than I do time, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I have so many videos I'd like to make that I just don't have the yeah. time to do it. So I actually have to like make cuts. And I think, yeah, if, if I try to give my audience what they want, that's why I ask them all the time what you guys want me to talk about. And that's why. I will decide to do some things unless they want me to do something, you know, like uh, like One Piece. I'm just, it's not going to happen. You know? I trusted the democracy for a read along, and they chose The Emperor's Blades yeah. by Brian Staveley. And you like it? it was you. It was you. I mean, I thought it was as whatever, but it was unanimously, almost unanimously despised. And everyone blames me, and I'm like, I didn't vote for it. That's not what I voted for. Right. Jimmy's like, Alan, I joined that read along. It's like I didn't pick it. The people chose it. They that chose happened to me with, uh, with, with Weave World by uh, Clive Barker. I had that in my, 
when I was doing like my fright fest kind of thing, there's all these scary books. And I said, you know, here, here's like some Clyde Barker books. And that was the one that won. And it wasn't a horror book. It was a fantasy book. And everyone was like blaming me for it not being a you know scary book. And I was like, you guys picked it, not me. <laughs> you know? So yeah, it happened to me too. I've heard nothing but good things about Emperor's Blades, honestly. Well, you know. <laughs> I had to until this this read along happened, so I was super excited. And the cover, you know, I'm sorry, I got it mixed up with Ember Blade. Ember Blade is the one I hear the over the top praise for. I'm sorry, different author. Yes, yeah, Ember Blade is the only book out in that series so far, but the second one's coming soon, I think. <laughs> sorry, I was laughing at Alan with his cat. Sorry, I'm people people. I'm giving people what they want. They want to see my cat, so I'm trying. That's to exactly, you know. Yeah, yeah, like I I read it after I read everybody crapping on it. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have disliked it as much as I did if I hadn't read all the crap. I mean, I have series like that. I mean, I have the series that people tell me, hey, I would never try that if it wasn't for your channel. And I I get the thing where people said, Hey, you said this was really good and it wasn't. And I'm like, Well, I've never said that you would love it. I just said I think you should give it a shot, you know. No one thing's for everyone. Like I still get people all the time. I tried reading Blade itself because of you, and I thought it was terrible. Nothing happened, and I'm like, "Oh no!" You know, I mean, you can be wrong on this one. It's fine. <laughs> That's fine with me. You do feel mildly guilty though when somebody says, "Yeah, I tried this because you liked it," and I actually didn't really like it that much. I get, I'm used to that. <laughs> like, that's most people who try the stuff I read. <laughs> oh no. You is, this like, is this like self-deprecating humor no. here? Do you really the weird thing is the, the pleasure that people get out of telling me how much they hated a book I liked. Like, and it's just me. I think I it it, it must just be me as a person. But people are like, hey, I read Trader's Blade and I hated it. Oh, and I I'm like that a lot. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. Like, I think it's just because people want to see you have a reaction because it's entertaining. But the it is entertaining is, when you rant, Alan. So it might yeah, be but I'm not up. actually a douchebag. So I'm not actually <laughs> going to be mean to someone about a book. Like that's the problem. Like I'm like I'm I, I'm only mean to Sarah because her opinion is unreasonable. But other than that specific instance where Winter King and Empire of the Vampire are the same quality of of construction and story, other We're than that, book I did not think would be compared tonight. Uh, they're the same. They're, 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 they're of equal quality. It's I read them at the same time, Mike. So I read Winter King and then followed it up with Empire of the Vampire right afterward. And Alan, first of all, will remain disappointed in me for life for the fact that I even read Empire of the Vampire. So like I already lost points for just the simple fact that I purchased it and then read it. But then I read them back to back and gave them the same rating. So... Oh, if everyone was, if everyone had this attitude right here, I, I get blamed for that. Uh, I, I get not really as much as that as I get the if I didn't love a book as someone as much as someone else, and they just can't handle that. And I'm like, I don't think that I told you you were stupid if you loved it. I mean, right? Go just read the comments on my unpopular opinion name of the wind video, and you would think that like I attack people's kids, even though in that video I say I still encourage you to read it and decide for yourself. But you know. I guess they kind of skipped over that part. Okay. It was what just about like, Name of the Wind do you dislike so much? Which one? Name of the Wind. Like, what is it about it that, like, what's the most off-putting? Um, that it's well-written. And people tell me that, oh, it's so beautifully written. It doesn't, the story doesn't matter. Well, it does to me. The story, I, 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 I say character first, and I need something to happen. I need a plot of some sort. And I didn't feel like the plot was that good and feel like the characters were that likable i felt yeah, like if you don't like Kvothe, you're not gonna enjoy that book yeah and it's just right. all the stuff that i criticized about ya fantasy were prevalent in that book and people were like oh but this is this is listed as adult fantasy so those things just don't count i mean if i'm gonna rail on this one series i mean same thing happened when i did on wheel of time certain characters i thought was a lot of ya tropes that i don't like and i brought it up and they're like okay so if it happens in this series, it's a YA trope and it's bad. But if it happens in Wheel of Time, because we love it, we're, we give it a pass. That's kind of how I felt like with Name of the Wind. I really believe that a lot of people read Name of the Wind right after. It was like the first thing they read after Harry Potter. 
And I can see that if that's like the first thing you read for Harry Potter. Yeah, it was probably perfect. It's probably perfect for you. Well, but there I is a school in there, I guess, right? Yeah. Such high expectations because I just heard this was like the greatest book of the last quarter century. It's just amazing that I went to, I'm like, am I, did I get a bootleg copy or something? I'm like, yeah, it's well written. But I was like, there's lots of things that are beautifully written. It doesn't make it entertaining for me. So it was just, it was really just something like that. I, mean, I do seriously want to revisit it and see if I still feel this way. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Going into it with different expectations, but until he decides he's going to finish that series, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Because yeah. what if I do read it and then like it? Then what? Then I got to be miserable with the rest of you guys about it. So no. <laughs> see, as you, it's true. It's probably better to not enjoy it than you're and not. That would, and you know, it's a thing. Is like that series and and uh, what the Liza Locke Lamora series. Those are like two series that people love. That I was, I didn't, I didn't hate Liza Locke Lamora. I just thought it was okay, and. You know what? That's two great series, apparently, that everybody's been waiting for books for that I don't got to struggle with. You know, I was reading Song of Ice and Fire years before HBO even touched it. So mm-hmm. I've had that to suffer with for this long. I don't need two more series to suffer along with. So it's great that I didn't like those first books, I think. I like the Gentleman Bastards series so far. There's three books, uh, and it's been a long time since the third book came out. I don't know what's going on with Scott Lynch. And you've had like serious personal issues. Oh, okay. That's too bad. Like, with, like I, a divorce and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love the first book, especially Lies of Locke Mora. Um, I would have thought, I mean, he has some, it's not exactly like Abercrombie, of course, but um, it's there's some pretty witty stuff in there. It was kind of fun. Um, oh, I thought the dialogue was great. And yeah, the dialogue's Locke. good. Yeah. yeah. Really good. It was a narrative thing for me with that book. It just felt like uh-huh. it jumped around way too much. And then a lot of flashbacks. Oh, how, there's no way they can get out of here. Here, here's this. Deus Ex mocking a flashback to tell you how they're going to get out of this situation. No, I just felt, it felt like I was watching like Arrow on W and CW or something like that. We're just like, yeah. Okay. I'm going to get the flashback of how they know how to do this thing that you had no idea the whole time they knew how to do. So I don't know. Just... Also, I think the relationship between uh, Locke and, and John is, is really good. It's really well done. That's a, a good fantasy friendship there. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, whenever I talk about uh, some of my favorite like fancy duos, like I love Royce and Hadrian from my era. A lot of people always bring up Locke and John. So, yeah. Alan, did you continue with um, right area, or is it just the first two? Sarah, to continue, wouldn't I have had to read some read something? <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> no, I don't continue with that either. I want to, but. <sighs> April, why did I not read any books in April? Why did I read nothing in April? And why has that destroyed my life? So <laughs> so are you are you doing summer school or are you going to take the summer off? That is not something that is possible to be done. Huh. Um, so no, I don't teach summer school. No. Um, but, and I also, I will never get a second job because once I've taken a second job, I've acknowledged how, how crap the situation is. <laughs> so I'll starve before I take a second job. But- um, no, I work during the summer. Like I have to prep my next year because I have to fix what didn't work. I have to, there's a new curriculum for this one class. So I have to write, I have to write that stuff. I have two kids who are going to the national competition that I'm going to be taking for a week at the end of July. One of them is trying out for like the, the national like quiz bowl team. So I got to drive her down to tryouts for that. Um, so I, I just, wor- I have to prep study guides because the thing is like these kids should be doing it. And if I give them a study guide for competition next year, they'll study it. But if I trust them to make it, it won't get done. So I have to do all this myself so that they can succeed this coming year when I just wish they would freaking do it because anybody can do it. I'm literally just transcribing crap but it just takes time. So all I do is work. I have to work every freaking day this, this, this summer or else it won't get done. And it still won't get done. Even if I do work every day. So no, I, I don't get, I, I'm not going to get to chill out. I'm going to Bush gardens. I will go to Bush gardens because that's what I do in the summer. But other than that, right. Typey, typey, typey. Uh, you, you're saying you can't become a book tuber because you're not a fan of John Gwynn. This would, this would sink you. Uh, I, I started my channel really early by taking a crap on maybe the most popular fantasy book <laughs> of this generation, and I'm still here. So I think you'll be fine as long as you do it in a respectful way. I don't think I think you've got to have an established, uh, you know, core audience before you can just really be like a jerk and like rant on something. 
uh, I, I think so, or else people are just gonna be like, why do I want to follow this guy who's just being a dick? You know, so I think if you do it in a respectful way, people will respect you for being honest, but, you know, being a decent person about it, giving your reasons other than just like, I didn't like it. It was stupid. You know, so I, I don't think that, that that opinion would sink you too much. I've run into quite a few people who weren't don't understand why I like Faithful and the Fallen so much. I mean, I think those yeah. people are weirdos, but, you know, I respect their opinion. <laughs> I didn't make it through the first book in Wheel of Time, so... I made it to her wheel of time and her brain of Samson takes. I'm surprised she, she didn't get cooked off book two and she, she didn't like, like the God of fantasy, Brandon Sanderson. Okay? That's risky there, Sarah. Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. yeah but risky. then she, she like sacrificed to the altar at Greenbone and oh. empire of the vampire. She offered that as tribute. So, so, oh, you're not letting that go. Are Alan, you? I'm starting Greenbone in July. <laughs> Have I sold out? I mean, no, until you tell me how good Jade Legacy is, and then I'm gonna be like Mike. Mike, was that, did you read it? Is it bad? No, but just no. everybody loves it. No, but it can't. It can't be as good as people say it is. Uh, it can't. Like it's not. It's not possible. It's at. It's like reading it is going to. I'm going to lose twenty years off of my age it's going to renew my youth so i'm going think to, it's like high collective <laughs> everybody just wants to be a part of something so they all say it's amazing no or? i'm going to be empowered to like salt like to undo the gordian knot without ha without hacking through it i am going to be the next person who develops space travel because of how enlightening this arc of the covenant was like it it I will say, Alan, it is not like, like for Patrick, he said it, it became his favorite fantasy novel of all time. Like it kicked out Storm of Swords, which I think was his previous favorite before that, or the one that he thought was the best. But I do think that it makes you care about, or at least for me, it made me care about things that I didn't care about before. Now, I will say, because I know that you also don't like Hilo, and a lot of people do, it did not make me like his character or any other particular character, but it did make me empathize with people that i hey, did not empathize with before but, but it's not the only book who's ever made you empathize with oh, other no. characters no 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 but I, I i i'm just surprised that i really liked it i do not think it is the best book that i have ever read but, but it did elevate the series but you wouldn't know sarah this is the first book to ever have compelling characters ever like and <laughs> like seriously if you distribute it around the world like no one will ever go hungry again this is the solution to world peace <laughs> in jade legacy that's how good it is like and i'm only being a little hyperbolic just a little jake I'm not, he's being I'm straight i'm not saying it's not good i'm not saying it's not good I am saying it can't be as good as people say it is. It can't. Like, it, it's not possible. Like, I'm apparently I'm going to like this, the experience of reading this, more than the experience of marrying my wife. Like, that's what it's going to be. So, sorry, Christina. You're going to be in trouble. I, am, I don't know how to feel about this because I had planned on reading Live Ship, and it's funny because when I talked to Jake, who Live Ship's like his favorite thing ever. He sold me so hard on Greenbone in our live in our in our uh, our talk about nothing video that I kind of just like have made that like a running joke now that he's the one who talked me into to reading it. But he he said he thinks I'm going to love it, but he he does he does stand for it quite a bit. So <laughs> I liked Jade Legacy. I mean, sorry, I liked Jade City. Like I liked Jade City. The only reason I haven't read Jade War yet is because it's 700 pages. Um, but I'm going to read it. Like, I'm going to read it and Jade Legacy. But the problem is, like, I can only be disappointed in Jade Legacy. Like, there's no way that I cannot be disappointed because of the... And I think it's just because I have not seen a book on BookTube since I've been doing this two years that has received such effusive praise upon release. I've never seen anything like it. Like, like at, even people who I, I thought would be like, well, it's not going to be my thing, are just like, and so, you know, because when Sanderson comes out with crap, you know, there's a million people, but, but like, that's just different. And there's always people who are just going to be like, I don't like Sanderson. But with this, I've never seen anything like this, this, like ever. And so, I don't know. I'm not trying to tell people that can't like Jade Legacy. Again, please understand, I am prone to hyperbole. But... I, I don't know. Well, Alan, you, I think you will like Jade Legacy, but just wait till you get to changes. 
<laughs> that's that's the book you're really. <laughs> that's a good troll job. That's that's well done. Sarah. So we call it the long callback. Sarah. <laughs> yes. This is not doing anything to repair our friendship. This is why you had a bad April because you didn't talk to me. You didn't have this kind of this kind of the abuse. Terrible. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how to process this. I apologize. Do you though? No. Are you actually sorry? No. <laughs> Philip, have you been standing this whole time? Yeah. yeah. What? Oh, I know good. he's wild, isn't he? Philip, get a chair. Hey, you know, I can I can still probably run a marathon, no problem. I can stand all day, Are but I cannot flexing? sit. If I had been sitting this entire time, I would be in agony. Really? So, really? the, so when you do your your week that was, and you're sitting, you're sitting down. Does that bother you? Uh, I can do twenty minutes, half an hour. After that, it's no, no. Really? Yeah. It's I a literal. Sit. It is a literal pain in the ass. <laughs> I don't sit at all during during the week, and then I do an inordinate amount of sitting during the weekend. Yeah. Um, but I stand like the whole school day. I. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. I agree, Reading Rainbow. I agree. I'm going to adopt that as well. Guys, just, just wait to get the changes. Wait till you get the changes should be the only response when anyone says they are they aren't enjoying a book from any series. I, I agree. I 100% agree. Like, we should all adopt that. Yeah, I'm not really caring for this, but wait till I get the changes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yeah, see, seriously, Mike, just wait to get the changes. I think, I think it's really going to turn your opinion. To be fair, Alan, they were right. But I do kind of, that's like, that's one of the kind of the downfalls of doing booktube is I do wish I had went into changes, not expecting anything and then just had my mind blown like that. So that, that is kind of the downside of, of basically like I'm starting wheel of time. Oh yeah. It's great. Except book seven through 10 are terrible. What? Yeah. And that, I feel like that chases people off, you know? So that's a, or lets them know what to expect in a series like, you know, Dresden files. And really, Dresden just builds. Like you start to like it more and more as the series goes on because Jim Butcher is so good at putting in those little details that make the world expand, that make you care more about the secondary characters. Even if you like Dresden from the beginning, I can't can't imagine that you don't like it more as it goes on because it just gets more expansive. That's the nature of the the series. It starts off as this like noir monster of the week type thing, and then builds into this world that has a ton of lore and history and. I like Full Moon better than Gra than Grave Barrel. True story. Did you? Mm -hmm. Wow. I like favorite. Full Moon better than Stormfront. Stormfront is definitely my least favorite. Stormfront is not a good book, really. I don't like Stormfront. Like the mystery is stupid. The mystery is stupid. I like things. Like I like Marcone, but that's about yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Marcone as well, but the the mystery behind it and how it's being done is dumb. Like it's dumb. Like, There's a reason it's never going to make anybody's top ten of those yeah. books. Yeah. Um, I do like Full Moon though. I like Full Moon a lot, and Grave Peril I don't like because it dragged on for like a hundred pages longer than it needed to be. Like if it ended a hundred pages sooner, I would have loved it. Um, but I really liked it. I was just like, why are we still in this house? Like, get out of this freaking house! How many times we're we gonna like get caught in this house? Like, get out of the house! Like, how, leave. how long is the book? It's only a couple hundred pages. Yes, it? and they ended it on page two hundred and fifty, and then they spent another hundred hundred pages in the house. Oh. Like, and then they left and went back. <laughs> Get out of the house. It wouldn't be a live stream without Brent dropping thing up for us all to read Prince of Nothing, our Scott Baker. So that it, oh, yeah. it wouldn't be that without that or him telling me to read Jack Carr or Terminal Man. So there, there we go. Got to get, got to get all those in. But hey, you know what? He's staying on brand and I admire that. That was me with Sun Eater for a long time. Now Sun Eater's kind of taken on like it's, it's own life. I see I'm in a, one of those groups on Facebook, like 20,000 people of, of, you know, fantasy discussion. Like every day there's someone that posts, uh, you know, the Sun Eater books. So that's great. Happy for that guy. I want to read Sun Eater so I can talk Roman history with Christopher Rock. I mean, he'll do it. He'll do it. Like you go to his live streams on his channel and I'm like, I'll, I'll tune in like a little late. And he's like in like a full on history lesson. I'm like. I wonder how this question came up. And then I remember I talked to him before and I know that we could be talking about, you know, uh, where this cup got made and he would end up you know, somehow it would lead back to like the 17th century something. So <laughs> I respect the hustle. Yeah. And I think him and Philip could probably talk for like nine hours. <laughs> of 
of stuff. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be riveting. It feels like we've been talking about nine hours, but well, not really. It looks I enjoy the list. Like, so unless they're like historical interests, like cross, you know, like Philip's going to be talking about like freaking the Saxons and the Welsh and the Vikings, like, Alan, don't forget your that's favorite. True. That's true. You, you're, how do you feel about philosophical stuff, Philip? Because I feel like with, with with Christopher, he really gets into the philosophy of stuff. So, I, I like the philosophical stuff. Like I bet he'd yeah. love Toll the Hounds. I do love Toll the Hounds. Uh, it's a great book. Alan, yeah. what do you think about Toll the Hounds? Don't ask Alan. Yeah, no, me and Alan have agreed on everything on Malazan so far. So it's it's, it's fine. The parts of Toll the Hounds that are good are good. People are apologists for Toll the Hounds because the ending, they really like like the last 150 pages, which fine, it's really cool. But it, look, Mike, what do you think of death? What happens when you die? Like, oh, is death all around us? Because you're going to get a lot of it. They're going to tell you exactly what do you think of death. Like everyone sits there and they ponder their existence. M meanwhile, like the world is at stake and they're like, oh, what is death? Am I death? Is death? <laughs> oh, death? <gasps> Is death in the air? <gasps> Could death come to all of us? It's just like, yes, man. Like, just man. Like, go, go, finish your errand. Like, finish your errand. You should read God Emperor of Dune. I think you'd have just a ball with that. <laughs> but Toll the Hounds is not. It's, it's not bad. It's just over long, in my opinion. There, there are more threads in Toll the Hounds that I do not like than any other Malazan book. Um, and I don't like. I, I, I don't like Anamanda Rake, and mm. that is like a big problem because. You know, so people like Rake and I like him. And then I realized he's been in like two books this whole series. Why do I like him? <laughs> I just, I don't know. But, but I, but I, I mean, I do like the book. I liked it enough to, you know, continue the series. It's just my least favorite. And it's not something I understand why. Any, to I me, don't I don't, I don't think favorite. that anything could top Reaper's Gale is my least favorite. So. Oh my gosh, I forgot reading Rain, bro. That's why I hate it. Forget the philosophical stuff. I don't ever want to hear a mention of the freaking word Kalik ever again. Freaking black goo everywhere. There is so much <laughs> black goo. You're thinking they're freaking repaving the interstates. It's just, there's too much. It's, I, there's, it's too much. It's too much. So I will take the navel gazing. I will take wondering if this rock equals death. Please just put the black goo away. Please. All right. Hey, well, at least it's not Dust of Dreams, right? I mean, at least that's what I, I like hear. Dust of Dreams. So you like Dust of Dreams, okay? Yeah. I like. At it. this point, I feel like it's it's like it's like Crossroads of Twilight for Will of Time. That when I read Dust of Dreams, there's no way that I'll hate it just because I'm going into it expecting to hate it, and then I'll probably be like, it's not as bad as everybody says it is. Yeah. Dust of Dreams. No, I, I actually think you would like a lot of Dust of Dreams, Mike. Yeah, the first hundred pages are the I think they're the best opening one hundred pages of 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 the ten. Like the first hundred pages, just like are go go go. They are really really good. Um, then there's a part. Then there's a part that everybody's like, I hate this part. I'm like, okay, well, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll have my say because I think we heard the other side. Oh, but, uh, sorry. you're right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I I think that uh, Toll the Hounds is some of the best literature I've ever read in my life um, because it is, uh, it is, there is a lot of death in there. That is true. It is a book that is about grief, but it's also about love. It's also about love and it's many manifestations as much as it is about grief. It is also about love and about uh, learning to carry the burden of loss and love is so intertwined with that grief and love being so intertwined in that book. It's, it's so beautiful and so true to the human experience. So I think people who have gone through loss probably will find a lot in that book that will resonate with them. And I love the, the looks I'm getting on Alan's face right now. You're, um, implying, you're implying Philip that I have never lost anything, which is- No, 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 of course, you, you, it's not gonna be universally true, but I'm seeing a lot of people who have experienced loss, I, I've heard from people uh, who find that that book particularly speaks to them. 
um, and, and their experience, the way they've experienced their yeah. grief. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to imply that, uh, I mean, you're a horrible person. If you don't like tell the hounds, I mean, uh, I don't know why you have to imply it. You can just say it outright. Philip. You can just <laughs> like, I, no, so it, it, it's, it's definitely, um, it is not the most immediately exciting Malazan book. That's for sure. Uh, that's for sure. And the Kellick stuff is kind of depressing. Uh, <laughs> but it is, it is a, in a way, I don't want to give away too much, but it is an example of an unhealthy way of dealing with grief, which is also very human, you know? So, um, but anyway, that's, that's my very brief sales. So job. When listening to Philip and AP talk about, told the hounds i listen and i'm like oh man i wish i'd have read that book what book <laughs> is that and then i realized we're talking about the same book and i'm like where how i don't understand how we could both have read this and you're, you're saying all these things that i'm just like i don't know where that is where is that in this book and it makes me so sad because i feel like i read it wrong i want to read it the right way to where I can be like Philip and be like, oh my gosh, this is the best piece of literature ever. And I like Malazan, like a lot. I just yeah. don't like Tola Hounds. Well, I think it's it's a beautiful thing that we, uh, there's so much literature out there that speaks to people differently and, and we're not all going to agree on the same thing. I'm sure that we could find in, you know, a number of books that the four of us will disagree about, um, but yeah. So that's okay. I still love you, Alan. I mean, all right. Good. <laughs> Hearing Philip talk about Toll the House sounds like me talking about the uh, Pet Cemetery. So, you know, dealing with grief and loss and how it's somehow a weirdly beautiful book. So, yeah. 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 But I'm just here for the facial expressions that Alan makes. I feel like I could just make memes off of that. I'm, that I'm a Muppet. I'm a <laughs> life of Muppet. It's, I've accepted it. All right, well, I feel bad for making Philip stand this long. So, I, I, yes, I think that, uh, Philip, go sit down. But you know, Alan's got homework to do here. Oh, and, Mike! And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I admire his compassion and dedication to doing it on a Saturday night. I don't he's he's living the dream. Uh, I don't know if everybody else has like a three-day weekend. I mean, obviously, Alan don't. But uh, you know, yeah. I hope you guys are, are, are taking. Sarah, what are you going to do the rest of the weekend? Uh, I do not have a three day weekend tomorrow. Um, I guess today now, cause it's almost one here. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see what the day brings. If yeah. The you're in a weird time zone. It's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> like when she day. told me it was like, Oh, good. Well, this time here is like 11 here is like two 30 here. I'm like 30. How? <laughs> so yeah, that was that was that was weird when uh, when that, that first happened. But, uh, I'm Are we half an hour time zone? Yeah. What about you, Phil? You're 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 done with school now, right? So you're just. I am. I'm a happy fella. I am. Uh, well, because I'm department chair now, I do have some duties that bring me to campus. But I am basically reading and writing and playing tennis and making videos. So yeah. No, yeah, I gotta do that videos thing myself. Shoot. Yeah, I'm yep, filming yep. video too. I haven't filmed. I should do that too. Can't do it. Yeah, yeah. Everyone tomorrow, make a video. This is the struggle, guys. Well, guys, thank you so much. This is awesome. Uh, I'm glad that you guys uh, put up with me for this long. Uh, I love having Alan. Thank you for finally debuting on the channel. All right, thanks uh, for having it, me. It, it's been awesome. Uh, I, I don't think that I've ever been more happy to listen to someone rant. Uh, <laughs> I don't know because, why I do it. I really don't mean to. No, it's because you're you're, you're you give a damn. That's, that's great. Like I said, right. I, I, I'm I'm married to a teacher, and I understand what you guys go through, and I would never interrupt the ranting on that because you guys do it because you love it, and you know you feel like your hands are tied. I get it. I, I definitely get that pain. So uh, if I can help you have that outlet to get those things out, man, I'm happy that it. I could that I could provide that. And I'm so on. Short of me sending you a six pack, I'm not sure there's much else I can do that's uh, very therapeutic, but. Um, yeah, so well, I don't have like a closing line or anything like that. So I guess I'll just uh say good night to everybody. But uh, thank you everybody Thanks for everybody joining everybody on the stream watching this long. Delightful. Thank you for hosting, Mike. Yeah, thank Mike you, Alan. Thank you, Sarah. Thank, thank you, you for joining. Bye. Bye folks. <laughs>